evening and welcome to another exciting show and tonight we've got chris the gardener hello chris and uh, don't tell him this but he's got a different hat on tonight but we decided i decided not to tell him you know but keep it to yourself. a warmer version a I warmer told you version. i changed didn't i this time of year i said it'll flip from the floppy one to a warmer one yes and we were talking about the uh advantages of having a real woolen one which we both got and the crappy ones with polyester and all that crap in it because i used to wear the polyester hats and i still do occasionally mm, i've got and a few you take it off and it's just full of let's be blunt sweat and it's yeah they just get wet whereas you get a woolen one merino wool one you put it on and it just keeps you warm it's just lovely it's, I, I, it, lets I, you, it lets your head breathe doesn't it mate so that's right and i'm saying i've you... had this has been the first time mate this end of the year but i've had six layers on today on my top half it was that cold this morning i mean admittedly i shed a couple of them as the day went mm. on but yeah it's, it was it's bloody cold, cold this morning isn't it? wasn't it, it i mean it's about freezing, mate. six down here it's a bit warmer but it was about six degrees this morning i think it was about four this morning really? mate, when, when it would be because you're further north mm, but there was we had to the window wasn't iced up but it was all water on it and all mm. steamed up inside the car this morning so yeah it wasn't a great winter. start but we're gonna have to get used to it mate that's right and i'll tell you something i'm absolutely always have been against putting the clocks back and forward why can't we keep them the same like china does all the year round totally agree mate it's redundant it was brought in wasn't it for farmers so That's they it. get um an extra hour in the summer and in the war they did double daylight saving where they moved right. for yes. two hours but like the um it was the some one of the native american chiefs said this and i think it's genius he said only a white man can think that you can cut the top off of a blanket stow it onto the bottom and think that you have a bigger blanket <laughs> which is pretty much what it is isn't it <laughs> i like that yeah, yeah i love that mate um, but yeah why don't they just move it or just leave it where it is now don't move it back yeah. in october or if they do do that next summer put it forward now and just leave it there let's have a bit more light in the evenings in the winter mate because four o'clock is a depressing time mate to have to finish work because it's getting dark well on um, the shortest day it's about half past three isn't it i know mate i'll always push it till four um but you know i mean and, and i'll work in the dark if i can mate like some of the places i go to they've got like floodlit courtyards i can still do bits till five you know if i want to but it's, mate, it's why, why not? I mean, I, that's right i mean um they did an experiment in the late 60s early 70s where they did keep the clocks the same and they made out that a load of school children um had been killed by a, a bus accident because of the dark mornings. Of course. And, uh, Not because of the incompetent bus driver. Well, no, because apparently it didn't happen because Esther Ranson, sorry, Aunt Ranson on That's Life. No, you got it right the first time. It. And they started a campaign to keep the slot clocks all the same, but it didn't work. And their reporters went to this part of Wales where it's supposed to have happened and they didn't find any evidence of it happening at all. And they reckon it was just made up right probably there was no, they didn't they are tried we, to are, Chris, are, we, are we surprised mate are we surprised by that no, no we're not are we mate there was a campaign about children going to school in the dark and things like that well to, to me it's lovely because you go you wake up in the dark and then about nine o'clock you'd see sunrise exactly that mate wouldn't Is we ra lovely? rather get up in the dark and have the sun come to us as we get up rather than yeah. have, than have an extra hour in the evening of it rather than four o'clock mate it's depressing well they're in france i mean uh why can't we be the same time as europe they're in france the depression rate and people committing suicide in the winter is less because their clocks it doesn't get dark until five o'clock possibly yeah i mean i know that i think it's one of the scandinavian countries it might be norway but they've got sweden i don't know but I'm one sweet. of them yeah it's got the highest suicide rate in europe i think a lot of that is linked to the fact that there are places there where it's in the winter it's dark almost 24 7. that's right anyway I mean, yeah well, anyway well, starts off yeah. just yeah. another quick tangent chris before we get yeah. stuck in as well it's quite i don't know what the right word to use is but mate it it 
what we spoke about last week, the situation mm. in, in another part of the world we don't like to mention, but just very quickly, yes. there's a lot more coming out now, isn't there, that suggests that what we were talking about was we were potentially on the right lines. Um, yes, I think yes. There's a lot more um, that, that, you know, and a lot of other people see it as well, which is brilliant. Um, obviously, what isn't brilliant is what's happening over there at the moment and the uh, the, 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 the genocide, for want of another word, um, that's going on is outrageous. Uh, the way I look on all wars and conflicts is that I'm on the side of the innocent person, the person that wants to love other people and, and promote love and kindness. That's, no that's, part that's, of it, yeah. that's who I'm on the side of. So it doesn't Absolutely. matter what, what, what religion, race they are, if they're a no. good, decent, nice people, then it, and it's the bloody psychopaths which is uh, a war is a, a psychopath's playground yeah. and i don't take uh, to me it's if it, it, it's the individual that matters the individual their heart if they've got a kind heart and there's kind hearts and there's very evil bastards everywhere but this is my local council i'm glad you segued into this uh we've got, got it this chris now, this is a picture of my local council hall. Now, I'm in uh, England. I'm in Hertfordshire, to be precise. Okay, I'm not in the Middle East. I'm in England. And this is outside my local town hall. Here it is. And so what's how comes the local town hall has become a political agenda? The lighting is to support the country that is shown at the bottom there. I won't say which one because of... Uh, youtube so to me it doesn't matter what is there it could be anything um i think that it's not a political agenda it's a place that should be the administrative center for the local area what's that got to do with an agenda well, this, and we, we had the, the ukrainian is, flag there as well yeah, what? Yeah. and but, this um, and taxpayers have got to pay for this I was, I was just about this. to say that you're paying for that, mate, at your council yeah. tax, number one. And number two, I think you'll find that nearly every um, local council in the UK is signed up to the Agenda 2030, the the, the um, World Economic Forum's Agenda mm -hmm. 2030. If you look into it, nearly every, I'm pretty sure they all are now. They're all signed up to that. As such, they are already showing us that they're part of the greater agenda they're not even a local authority anymore are they that's hmm. that's an international concern that's an sure. issue and it's got like you say nothing to do with hertfordshire um local council county no. or or district right. whichever it is but this this is the world we live in now isn't it mate everything we have to be told how to think about everything well that that's right and also um for people that live around my area, which they're going to introduce 20 mile per hour zones. Okay. Wow. Now, if you, you can have your say, so they say, and this is a link. If you go on to foghamhallradio.com, which is my website, I've updated it before, just before the show, I've just updated it. And if you look on the left hand side, you'll see about 20 mile per hour zones. Press the button there and it'll link you straight through where they say it's a public consultation, which is bullshit. But it closes, I think, in the middle, sometime in the middle of November. So there's time to have a say, which they'll probably ignore, but it's worth objecting because it'd be the uh, final nail in the coffin of local businesses. Because who the bloody hell is going to want to drive along, crawl along? I mean, what's next? A bloke with a flag walking in front of your car, like that in 1905, you know? Yeah, maybe, mate. Uh, we, we know what's next, mate. They're going to take our cars away from us. Precisely. That's, that's, that's Cross them off the road. Yeah, mate. In all, and not just like that, in all kinds of other ways as well. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I know that I know of at least three or four people in the last year that have been swabbed by the police and have lost their license because they have been over the limit for cannabis even though they hadn't smoked a joint for maybe 24 36 hours the the, the, the legal limit for that has been set so ridiculously low that anyone who smokes smokes dope if they drive a car 
they are vulnerable to being to losing their license for a year. I speak through personal experience, and and I know of other people as well that have, have had the same predicament. And the thing is, Chris, once you are banned from driving for that particular reason, it's not a case of you just serve your one year ban and then you just start driving again. You five or six insurance companies have turned me down flat and won't yeah. not even interested so i've got to go to some specialist insurance company that will charge me two and a half times what i would probably pay i mean my insurance used to be like 300 pound a year mate um, oh, it's, it, it, it's uh, all to do with with this and of course well, yeah but 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 using that to price you and me out of the market and uh, oh, yeah. know, electric cars who can afford an electric car um and they they catch fire right. anyway i don't want one well someone said was it an external combustion engine i thought that's a brilliant one it's not my oh, idea someone external, said that. an exter external combustion that, engine that's good i like that. you got a car that's got an external yeah. combustion engine which yeah. is which is which is true but um regarding this 20 mile an hour zone as i say you can look on this fogham hall let's go along the bottom radio or better still have a look at my telegram group and join it because we're very friendly and we say naughty things on there that you wouldn't be allowed to say on Facebook. So there we go. So enjoy it while it lasts, mate. Your, because talking about groups and things, see, I don't like clubs and groups. I avoid them like the plague. And this is what we're going to really talk a little bit about tonight about individuality and responsibility. But before we do, has anybody now I bank with um I said bank with a B uh right lloyd's bank unfortunately and uh have done so since... bank with someone in your mate. well that's right and this came through my letterbox okay and i don't have credit cards i have a bank card but not a credit card i will never have a credit card okay you and this is pr to promote a credit card well i thought what's this and before i tore it up and shoved it in the bin there just there, it says, I don't know if you can, you probably can't read it. Can't quite read it, but no. Now I can. What it says, uh, well, hang on, I'll hold it closer to the, I should have actually scanned this. There you go, you got it. Skip the queues. Skip the with queues airport with security airport security well. fast track. Yeah. Now, can you see what that's saying? Soon it will be, you've got to have one of these cards to travel. Of course. And, and then it'll be on your phone. But that, that's where Correct. it'll go. It'll all and go that's where it's going. Home. The card, I don't think much longer for. Um, maybe sort of next hmm. couple of five years, it'll all be on the phone. Um, they'll they'll get rid of credit cards. Um, and like I say, it, it'll be a case of no phone, no play. Um, yeah. Which means I won't be doing very much, but there you go. Well, what gets me, I mean, for example, now, I'm not, those of you that are observant in, uh, will notice that I'm not a um, oriental lady. I'm not female, uh, unless you need to go to Specsavers. So why are they showing this oriental lady advertising <laughs> a credit card? Well, it's nice what and this diverse. oriental lady got to do with me? I just it's, don't it's, know. It's, it's, it's nice and diverse, isn't it, Chris? Yes. It ticks boxes. Yes. You know, she's probably transgender as well, mate. You but never know. It ticks boxes, mate, doesn't it? And the fact is that the last time I looked, we are still predominantly a society of white-skinned people. But if you look at the telly and watch adverts and, and it... it it's ridiculous we've gone from one extreme to another so we've gone from being apparently institutionally racist to now we're almost racist towards our own kind these days mate well you've um, been accused of anything i mean i've, I've been accused of being antiseptic yeah well, she said about the antiseptic, you know, but, you know the, 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 another word you know or yeah. antihistamine whatever you want to call it but, but that's because you've criticized a country mate that you're not allowed yeah. to criticize in any way shape or form and if that's you do then you are and again, mm. think about that for a minute, just how ridiculous that concept is. Mm. Um, nobody is beyond criticism, nor no, no country, no, well, I say country, no government of a, mm. or, uh, of a country. Um, you know, this is the trouble, isn't it? We talk about countries like 
we've bracketed all the people and politicians in together. It's, mm. it's we've got no beef with the people of any country, mate. Precisely. Most of them are just like me and you. Um, you know, the people that we've got the problem with are the are these, the psychopathic um, puppets that that are in play that we know about that that, um, that, that are steering us towards our own our own funerals, basically, mate. Oh. You're right. You're right. They 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 they, they are. But um, should we uh, now? I've got some a lot of stuff on here, and what have we got here now? We're going to talk about responsibility tonight. Now, before we do, do do, do you want a quick dive into chat? Because we've got absolutely yeah, let's, let's loads see. in chat. I mean, it's really built up. And th oh, by the way, thank you everybody that's looking on the Bitshoot channel, because coming up, John Hamer again. He's, he, he's going to go on bit shoot that from now on because he, he's bit shoot, up. He? sorry because straight on bit shoot. straight on yeah because uh we can only do recordings on bit shoot and hopefully I go over to, i'm hoping to go over to rumble and obviously soon because i'm just sick up sick to death of this youtube censorship where we can't say things you know it's ridiculous i watch every word and all that right let's have a quick shifty in chat shall let's we do it uh, we've got here. Guess who was first? Now, what? Now, as of it, was it? I'm going to take a punt on Bob. Or Steve. Well, it. Unfortunately, fortunately, it was. It was Steve, Steve with the three. Three. He was on at seven fourteen, so he's beaten Bob this week. I'm Although nice. Bob is the all-time well, record holder for was it four four o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> Bob's had some proper early doors ones, hasn't he? he, he That's really right. Has. And, uh, Hi, Bob. And I know that we've got Deb. Hello, hey. Deb. Enjoy the show, folks. Please don't forget to like and share. And if you haven't subscribed, why? Take care and love to oh, all. To what all. a lovely Hello, message, Deb. Chris. So lovely to see you again. And let's hope we can come back soon. You know, that would be great. Fantastic. And also, I saw Deb. Uh, she's on the... I think it was from a television show uh, that she's put on uh, on there, and uh, very came over very very well, very interesting. And I think I think I think it was Netflix. She'll have to she'll have to actually um, uh, correct me on that one. We got Aunt Sally. Hello, Aunt it's Sally. Nice, evening, Sally. folks. We got Mark Anthony. Evening it's all. Looking for the show, and we've got Louise Wilcox. We've got uh, hello. Hope uh, we are we all well. Great to see you back. Deborah Singleton. Oh, yes. So I, you know, I've been very worried about Deb. She's that's um, lovely, mate. That is that's that's really, really nice to see. So. Yes, yes. And um evening, Chris. This is from Stewie. Long time over here, so it's nice evening, to have you back. Stewie. And we've got the White Queen. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Uh <coughs> we got here. Um Oh, shocker, the news being made up. Laugh out loud. That's how I felt about it, Louise. We've got Deb again. Thanks, Louise. Can't stop. Just thought I'd pop in and show my face and support. Oh, that's nice. Here we go. Then we got, I often sleep in the dark. This is Stephen Truthseeker. Especially when in, when in tent in the local park. <laughs> Have you seen the end of the sh uh, film Magic, The Magic Christian? Where they're in a tent, I think it's Hyde Park or somewhere in London, and the park keeper comes over, Comp, Comp, Camp here, yeah. and suddenly a wad of notes comes out by hand from the tent. He went, Ah, uh, yes, yeah, all been all right, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got here Aunt Sally. Uh, I'm suspicious of the reasons why they mess around with the clocks. We know they don't care about children. Yes, well, I think it's just to send us off balance. I really do. I think that they 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 know that it it causes. I mean, it causes problems in all kinds of ways. It can't be good for for nature as well. You know, there's got to be um, in terms of where humans interact with nature. The times change. That that's going to be unsettling. I'm thinking potentially cows being milked an hour later or earlier than what they normally would be, and things like that. So, yeah. Oops. Oh, we've gone back to... That's, back that's to the... popped up again. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's probably 
It's probably Benjamin Nutty Knickers. It's, sort of it looked thing. like a virus, Chris. I think it, it looked like it does look like a virus. It did look like and you've got a virus on your computer there. <laughs> I, should, I should probably get that clean. <laughs> the police are banning flags left, right, and centre. Yeah, why don't they bloody well ban this one then? From from well, my town hall. <laughs> you know why, Chris? That's the right flag. That's the right flag, mate. The oh, wrong yeah. flag would have like a triangle with some stripes going horizontally across and a, yes. and a triangle there. That yes. would be the wrong flag, but that's the right flag, so it's all good. A sacrifice. sacrifice. Right. Hereditus. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yes, and then we've got here. Um, yes, I'd do agree with that. Yes, I hundred percent agree. Do I can't read it so? out, obviously, you know what, but. Um, I don't well, want to get we need, we need evidence first, Stephen. Yes, yes. We need there evidence we before we can make statements like that. <laughs> right. It says here, um, councils and governments should keep their noses out of each other's countries. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They're all one corporation. Pretty much what I said, Louise. Yeah, yes. I totally agree with that. And Stephen Trusick, I hope I'm read them. I, I, I'm not dyslexic this week, Stephen Trusick, and I'm reading your messages out all right. But give give me a slap on the hand if if, if I'll police you, mate. If I if if I see okay. you, if if I see you with any kind of like try and spread any misinformation about Stephen, <laughs> I'll I'll put my foot in straight away and and I'll call it when I see it. All right. I just. <laughs> mate, it's an easy mistake to make. Bless, yeah. bless Stephen, and bless you. I, I've got to be honest, mate. I was chuckling when you read it out wrong. I think the second or the third time. Um, but I think oh, it so caused, yeah, it that's caused so Stephen hard. a bit of distress, and that's never yeah. good. Um, and I felt bad was for for chuckling to myself about it afterwards. So you know, I, I feel your pain, Stephen. I really do on that one, mate. Um, but I, 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 it was. I'm pretty sure it was just a genuine mistake. It um, was. It was. Like it was. Said, I was a bit tired as well. I, I well, think fine. what it was. And you, and, you, and you, Chris, you're getting on, aren't you, as well, mate? You know, I'm so. getting on a bit. And yeah. I, not only that, is that uh, everything was going. Excuse my language. Tits up. Everything oh. went wrong. I, I, I've never known a show to go so wrong. I mean, it even beat John Hamer's computer. That's how bad it was. To be fair, <laughs> a lot of it was out of your control, mate. There weren't really a lot you could do. And and Paul Wayne as well. You know, things weren't working mm. for him, obviously. His end, yeah, it's like I said to Wayne, I, I sent Wayne a message a couple of days later and, and just said, you know, you know, hope it works out, you know, make gutted for you and all that. But like I said to him, these things are sent to try us, Chris. Yeah. They I... are, they're not accidental. They're, they're sent to test your patience and to help make you a better person. You know, I honestly believe that. I don't <coughs> think that anything's an accident. Well, when you look at this, is Stephen Trusick has said twenty miles per hour. Is that for bikes and people running, except running, etc.? Well, your car is running very inefficiently at a and slow speed, spitting out a lot more pollution at twenty. Right. I mean, and... a car runs depending on the size of the engine about sort of 40, 50 miles an hour. That is that's it, the it, most it, efficient it, speed normally. Efficient 50, speed, yeah. I think 50 is the most about efficient. 50 is your, yeah. is your efficiency. Yeah. At 20, you, you're spitting out a lot of crap. And a lot of cyclists in Wales have complained and said that it's actually making the roads more dangerous for them um, because cars are scared of breaking the 20 mile an hour limit to go around them and are struggling to get around them. And they're also eating a lot more exhaust fumes now. Than, than this, this is what I've read. And people so, are looking at their speedos and not the road, so they don't know. Like the it's about it's about it's about speed not go over the speed. Yeah, limit. exactly. I mean, but it's about getting people off the off the road now. Yes, yeah. mate. That's what it's all. Twenty miles an hour. This is Louise. Says doesn't well, do much for their net zeros. Well, bullshit. I mean, I've uh, I'm going to be a bit smug here because I'm a very keen motorist. I love cars, and also like cycling as well. But my cycling side is a uh, leisure cycling you know i i'm a fair weather cyclist i don't go out when it's piddling with rain or when it's cold uh i like it in the summer when there's sunshine and there's a 20 mile an hour zone already uh at the old ponds uh, in cheson where i live and there's a um because we you know you can go when you're on a bike you can go down the old bus lane and yeah. uh, I was a bit of a smug sod. There's a bit of a hold up once, and there was a Porsche and BMWs all held up. And I'm on my racing bike, 
shooting past them along the inside, going, the, the sort of smug look on your face. Thinking, yeah, 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 there's something satisfied about that. Isn't there? Yeah, there is something a bit. It's childish, isn't it? <laughs> but men, actually, I don't I, think men ever grow up, mate. To be fair, no, but I cycle like I'm in the car. So when I come up to the traffic lights, I don't go to the front of the traffic lights. I actually sit and wait my turn. You're good. Like you see, like a car fine. does. No, yeah. I'm, I'm bad, mate. I'm one of these people that as soon as I see a red light, I'll I'll, I'll just jump up on the pavement and cycle on the pavement <laughs> to go around the red light. And you see, I, I'm I'm not cycling for pleasure. If I I haven't cycled for a few years now, but I've got yeah. a bike, really nice bike yeah. as well, in the shed, like a. Mm -hmm. Mate, it's so light you can pick the whole bike up and hold it on your little finger, and I'm not exaggerating. Well, is really it a carbon can. fiber or aluminium? Car it's something, mate. I paid something. It was a, it was like a 900 pound bike, but I got it for 600 quid because there was a oh, dent yeah. in the frame, um, and it had a couple of scratches on the frame. Mm. I, it was a, it was a present to myself when I split up with my ex. Um, I, I, I moved in with a mate, and he didn't want more than like a couple of hundred quid a month for bills and um what was going to be a few weeks ended up being about nine months so basically i had a bit of disposable income for a little while mm. and um i saw this bike and I was like, oh. so i bought it just like literally went in 600 pounds yep i'm having it and it is an awesome bike mate and it's in bits in my shed at the moment yeah. um which is a travesty because i if if i fix it up mate i'd, I'd use it for work um in the village i mean i'd get a trailer for it or make a trailer for it. I did made a trailer for my bike when I was 16 years old, so it's not difficult. But it would be great for just doing my local jobs in, mate. It really would. Has it got the um, old drop handlebars? Because bikes now don't have No, drop mate, it isn't. Mate, it's an old... It's an old... Hmm. It, it, it looks like a skinny mountain bike. It's a proper, hmm. proper, like, racing bike, mate. I mean, the wheels are, like... It's, where are they? Like, really skinny wheel yeah right? like, like, skinny. Like, my one's steel though but it's a, it's a lightweight steel it's a special lightweight steel so it is as light as a feather yeah um, yeah this is mate it's incredible and nice. the, the the tires well they're 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 only about half inch wide yeah like, yeah, these, yeah these are like yeah. just like proper slicks mate there, yeah. there's hardly anything to them anyway we have right my diverse we, we, no it's my fault that's my okay phone. trade now, th this is interesting. Uh, this is answer. He says, tradesmen like plumbers, etc., will pass the cost of all that extra traveling time onto the customers. Of course they will. Any, you know, look at what's happening at the moment. I mean, everything is going up, up and up. And it's just mm. going to keep going up because people, I've, mate, I've put my prices up um, in, in the last couple of months. Uh, you know, I've gone up a couple of quid an hour. Um I've had to, mate. I, you know, we're not exactly rich, and I'm still cheap for a gardener, mate. Um, you I'm are. Still, yes. I'm still rich. way below what I could charge. I tell you um, something. You'd earn you'd earn a lot round here because oh, mate. Yeah. there's someone. Uh, I, I won't say who, but somebody hires a gardener around here, and I don't really go. They do a lawn that looks quite nice, which is all the lines in it, but the rest yeah. of it's a bit bodgy. What they do and um yeah, you know you get a lot of mate there's a lot of cowboys um i'm mm. i'm lucky i've got a, a, a an established loyal customer base i've um i've recently downscaled the business i mm. used to in, like have a couple of chaps used to work for me i don't anymore i've i've shed a few customers and i've downsized and that but i'm lucky in terms of i got i i after a couple of years now i can pick and choose um, but when you start out, you take whatever you you can get, and that invariably can end in some pretty miserable mornings and afternoons working for people that you don't really, you wouldn't normally say hello to, or you'd walk across the street to avoid them. I've had that in architecture, and you know, and you always uh, will, won't you? I mean, I still keep my hand in, and I still yeah. sort of get the occasional contract come along, um, but uh, I think that. I'm in a position now where I can pick and choose, which is very nice. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, I want that project. Well, I've, mate, I've pretty much got my, yeah. my winter is now completely mm. sorted in terms of I've got more than enough to keep me ticking mm. over all through the winter now, which is brilliant. Um, come the summer, um, we'll see who 
comes back in next year, who comes back to us and who doesn't. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, I normally work six days in the summer anyway. So that's, that's a standard. Anyway, tangent. Oh, no, I, come on. Back okay. To chat. Uh, oh, back, back to chat. And the other thing, very quickly on the tangent, uh, though you advised me to plant some potatoes that high in the greenhouse. They're you kids might tree. haven't even poked their noses out of the soil yet. Yeah, they're going like a bleeding rocket now. Well, it is down it's south. A bit it's warmer, November, isn't? December. I ain't going to have any in November, mate. Yeah. Mine aren't even out the top of the soil yet, mate. So you're 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 a better man than me. How, how do you know when they're ready? Is it when they flower dies off well, or something? Yeah, yes and no. Mate, if they're flowering, then they're ready. But yeah. they don't always... My last lot didn't go into flower. So oh. they, that, 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 but what did happen was the, you know, because the, the, the plant starts to droop. So you'll see oh. it'll start to, you'll see that it's starting to, to, to finish. And, and, and the thing with spuds is, mate, it don't matter if you leave them in the ground two, three weeks after they're done, they'll still be there sitting there waiting for it. Yeah. And also, um, no slugs because I put the, you put straw, yeah. yeah, you said about that, mate. Yeah. That yeah. was from my, that came from my great granddad, mate. That came from a chap called Reginald Sears, who was my great granddad. And um, like I said to you, he put them on it. Put he put straw around his strawberries every year, every single year. Never got slugs. Um, he was yeah. A lot of what I I I I do now, mate, comes from him. And it's stuff that I've known since I was six, seven, eight years old. Just following oh. him around the garden, mate. And and you know he was. He was such a beautiful man. He really was. He lived to 105. So um, my, oh, my granddad was was fantastic because he was an inventor. Brilliant. And and he uh, he came from an engineering background. He was a scientific instrument maker. Right. During the First World War. Fantastic. He went from an optician. He worked as an optician. I don't think he did the optics. I think he sorry. I think he did the engineering side of the optics. So I don't think he was a when you say an optician. I don't know. I really don't know. No, but it'd be worth he, looking into, Chris. Yeah, and he became a scientific instrument maker. Yeah. But my mum was born into poverty because he couldn't get work during the Depression. And so he had to do almost anything. That's and uh, did, That's yeah. right. And then during the Second World War, he worked for Osters because he's too old for the war, for the forces. Uh, and um, he, 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 he um, but I take, I, I take after my granddad, I think, a lot because... He was um, You're very much, industrious. Aren't he you? used to sit there ga gazing out the window for hours on end. Well, I'd do that. And he would then come up with an idea and he invented a, a special hinge for Oster aircraft and they couldn't get over this problem and he got over it. And he, he, he and when I, I remember my youngest memory was when it going into his shed and he invented this idea. Of, it's like a thing that swiveled on the heel of his shoe so his shoe wouldn't wear out. Well, it couldn't have caught on because it did make a fault shoot out of it. But these different ideas, it was amazing. Some of the but yeah, fantastic. So and he was keen on golf as well. An idea and then put yeah. it into practice and and try it. I mean, how yeah. many people? I mean, Jesus, the number of ideas I've had, mate. None of them have ever even made it out of my head. So fair play to him for having a go. Bob yeah. was spot on. I've got, uh, Bob, spot on, mate. That that yeah. is. I mean, control. I've seen stories of people's Teslas catching fire and they've been locked in. There was one I read about where a guy had to kick the windshield out to get out because the car caught fire and it locked him in. Yes. So, and the, the other, so we're, I'm going to record a show next week with John Hamer, which won't be shown on YouTube. It'll go on to um, Bitshoot. Odyssey and Rumble channels, and it's about electric cars. Yeah. And I'm thinking of calling it the uh, external combustion engine. I think you should call it the external. Oh, and that's not my idea. It was someone in chat that suggested mate, it. That's, that's and it's a brilliant the one. It's not my no, idea. Is, no, that's yeah. the winner, mate. If yeah. you call it anything else other than that, then you deserve a slap from the universe because that is what it should be called, mate. The external yeah. combustion engine. Because they're popping up out there. I can't afford a battery for an electric car. Yeah, they're like 20 grand. And you don't even own them. You lease them. Well, I saw a Nissan Leaf for sale several years back, about just before the lockdown, about three years ago. And it was £3,000. I thought, that's bloody cheap. I think it's a 2010 or 11 or something. Yeah. And the reason why, you know, you know what the right needed a new battery. Was 60, 60 miles is at Bishop Stortford. 
60 miles. Right. I thought, what a load of crap. And yeah. the replacement battery was about 17, 18,000 pounds. It's worth more than the car's worth. That's why the car was three grand, mate. Yeah. Uh, now, it says here, uh, Bob Olio, electric cars, CBDC, meat free, control. Yeah, the, Bob, yeah. Bob, you're on the money again, mate, in my opinion. That's that's exactly where we're, we're at. Right. Uh, Stephen Trusica says, I didn't like Telegram of all the uh, constant notifications. Can you turn them off? I mean, I don't know, Chris. You can turn them off. Yeah, I'll turn around. mine off. Yeah, well, there you go. Like ding, 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 ding all the day. Get on there yeah. and turn them off. So please come up. You're very welcome there because I say naughty words like tit and bum on there. You see, which yeah, you can't mate, do on. Sadly, on, on, on you're not going to see me on Facebook. there. I've, 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 I've made a vow that that this is as, as social media as I get. I'm happy to come and do a podcast with you. Happy to to sit and chat about the world. But I, my, I think there's still potentially a Facebook profile for me out there. Um, I haven't been on it for a long time. I wouldn't even know how to log into Good it. For now, you. Mate. Sorry. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, and I've, I've I signed to uh, Stephen Trusig. You know, if he wants to come on now, yeah, we're get very on friendly. There, Stephen. Get them notifications yeah. turned off, boy, and get yeah, I've turned them off, so yeah. I don't, I don't get it dinging all day, because yeah. I, I used to be on um, WhatsApp, and I don't use now it at I am all. On that. And WhatsApp is like a bleeding fire engine. You get in, open, switch your phone on in the morning, you go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> You're it's a popular really man, crazy. mate. I get about one a week. So, um, what's he say? I can see I them can charging people for just. Mate, they do in some yeah. cases these days. There are certain accounts where you have to pay a monthly fee, and and that oh, yeah. potentially will will end up coming to, to to all of us. On the continent, I think they charge. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure about America. My bank keeps pestering me for a mobile number. No chance. Don't want one. It's Good for you. Ways. Yeah. I don't ancient Ruby. Oh, hello, Ruby. Hello, ancient Ruby. Uh, in the 90s, I was told electric cars will be made to keep the people under control more. If the grid goes down, which it will, you will not be able to travel at all. Of course. Spot on, Ruby. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Another. Uh, and again, you know, we've talked about crypto before. And this is for me, it's the same issue as with electric cars. It's something that can be switched off. You yes. know, I'd rather have my assets where I can keep them. Well, I prefer a car. My attitude is I think we reached the peak pinnacle of designing cars in the 1980s because most 1980s cars are, I know, I, I, I know I'm, I'm being very sort of general here, are good quality, very good. Not They're, at all, mate. I, up until yeah. four years ago, I was driving around in a 1987 Fiat Uno 1.5 SX. There was mm -hmm. only two of them left on the road in the UK. The other one was in Scotland. Yes. And, um, mate, I mean, it was my mother-in-law's car. She bought it new in 1987. And when I got it, it had about 35,000 miles on the clock. I put about 35, another, yeah, about 35,000 on it in the five years that I had it. And then I sadly stacked it into the back of somebody's four by four on New Year's Eve um, four or five years ago, mate. And that was the end oh, of it. But it, mate, yeah. that car started every, in the coldest weather. I mean, it had a manual choke. It had the old manual choke on it. Really? Yeah, mate. 1987, remember? Um, well, my, uh, 1987, I've got a 19, hang on, I've got a 1989, was it 88? I've got 89 uh, Toyota Carina. There's only about. You still got that now? Yes, I think it's about Beautiful. five on the road, and it's showroom condition. It's only done about forty-five thousand miles, wow. and um, it is. Uh, I can get thirty-nine to the gallon with it. It's a two-liter fuel injected. Yeah. So and then it's got a, a moon roof. You know the old <laughs> comes back. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got all the bells and whistles. It's. Um, it hasn't got a turbo, but it's fuel injected. Yeah. And um, it, it's because boy racers, they sort of come up behind. I'm not a speed merchant. You, you know, like this. And, of course, you just flip the accelerator, you know. But the thing is, you can't do that now because you've got cameras looking at you. But yeah. um, you're watched everywhere now, aren't you, when you're driving? Yes. Um, I haven't yeah. driven now for nearly a couple of years. Um uh i'm quite reluctant to start driving again to be fair for various well, reasons 
I, I, I love I used to love driving, but I've now got to the point where it's I mean, with um, the thing is with a classic car, you've got classic car insurance, which is very reasonable. But again, I'm not a speed merchant. I, I just like the comfort of it. And yeah, and a bit of retro, me, mate. And what gets me about it is that all these cars, all the bells and whistles, they don't do much more in miles per gallon than mine does. No. That's that's the weird thing. And um, you got all that. Oh, you got a nice uh, stereo inside. Was it with all the four speakers? Yeah, you got all the bells and whistles. Yeah. A nice leather steering nice wheel. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's everything there. But the thing is, is that um, the uh, every year it's about three hundred and sixty something pounds you have to pay road tax. Uh, yeah, but my it's forty tax. years old. I might not have to pay. I don't know, but I think they think they're stopping that. You know. That, well, they uh, stopped. That used to be twenty-five year exempt, didn't it, on road tax? If your car yeah. had been taxed for twenty-five years, you didn't have to tax it anymore. Well, it's um, been over that. This was it eighty. No, they got rid of it, mate. They stopped yeah. it back in the nineties. Um, but I remember my mate having a um, an old. Um, his dad had a Wolseley, and um, that was covered by the twenty-five year exempt. So he never had to pay for road tax all he had to do was just register it every year and he got his tax um well, taxes are gone anyway, anyway Mate, because we tried to again. run we look what what what, yeah. what were we what was it that we initially started off to to get on this responsibility that's yeah, what we're talking about that was it but did we have so, anyone else in chat that we wanted to say hello to well we've got chris sean you know sure. not chris hi chris and guest uh well i'm eric tonight because we're both chris as you say uh i guess outside the political hall show of controlled dissent uh the landscape is made of auto believers are ah, and auto skeptics which is what we're talking about tonight and the new frontier is ology absolutely spot right on and it's almost uh, like he's seen the show before we've done it it, it it does seem that way now the thing is shall we show before we kick off about individual responsibilities would you like me to show a little extract from 1984 which shows groupthink at its worst and this is what i call groupthink even as we grasp at victory there is a cancer an evil tumor growing Spreading in our midst. Shout! Shout! Shout out his name! from 1984 the film that was made. That, sorry i thought that was a meeting at your local council mate that's funny you should say that it looks like it didn't it <laughs> it, could be, it, could be. it really could be it, well it, it, it could be because when you look at it, it that from the moment well, we start school we're conditioned into groupthink. have you noticed that yeah mate, You've got even, to be, pre, even yeah. preschool even preschool mate yeah. You, you're almost conditioned from from the minute you have any comprehension about anything um as as young kids you can you know you can get into cliques and gangs and and even before yeah. you go to school mate I, I think you know you can say that people will try and corral you into a a group that's and then that's what happens for the rest of your life well i've always been there's two things i've never liked um clubs 
and groups. I've always felt uncomfortable in them. Uh, although I made an exception at the lockdown because I felt so isolated. I felt I had to go along to a group. Yeah. Which I went against my own gut feeling. You went against your gut, didn't you, mate? And yeah. Where, and where did that put yeah. you? And, yeah, precisely. You know, but the thing is, is that and badges, I can't stand badges. Yeah. And I've got this situation now where people with this Fockham Hall thing people saying, want a badge, why, Chris. why don't you do T-shirts and caps? And I was thinking, hang on a moment. I've never worn things with names on them. Yeah. So if it did have it on, it would be Fockham Hall individual because we're an individual. Yeah. But I don't I'm, – I'm uneasy against this branding. Well, then, you, you, you know what you know what the answer is, Chris. If it's not sitting right in your gut, don't do it. And Good don't point. let anyone bully you into doing it, mate. You, look, hmm. you are what you are. This is – Fockham Hall is what Fockham Hall is. If yeah. you like it, great, brilliant. If you don't, then – Find something you do like. Well, that's if right. you're not going to do badges, mate, you're not going to do badges. And it's as simple as that. You've got to do what sits right with you, mate. And, you know, that is that is kind of where I've been now for a long time in my life, is that I'm not really interested in being popular or, or being, um, you know, anything other than what I feel is, is, is my truth. Um and, and my gut, I wouldn't go against my gut ever again now. I have, mm. and it's it's not served me well. So I listen on. to my gut. Uh, you're spot right on. You see, the thing is, I think everything that happens to us in life is to make us more wise. Yeah. And when you saw that mob thing, like you to us, it looks like a meeting at local council. It does a bit, doesn't it? Um, it, yeah. it, 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 it you you realise that. Uh, I mean, I actually sat through, I've sat through numerous planning submissions where you're allowed to sort of watch them. And you see councillors and that acting like children. Uh, I am the seat, I'm the chair, and you do this, and, you, and you're the chairman, you're the... And I was told once, I said to it once, and they said, oh, you've got to speak via the chair. So I said, well, hello, chair. Uh, what, I bet that was like a balloon, mate. You know, I mean, that, and they're all sort of... They all look yeah. as if they've just been touched up, sort of. You know, and uh, the thing is, <laughs> but that, that, there's that sort of atmosphere. I mean, well, this it's that, of... they have that air of superiority, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 like I don't know if you've ever been in 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 a magistrate's court. No, I haven't. Or, no, I mean it's. I'm a good boy. <laughs> yeah, it good may, I'm not. Um, it's. <laughs> I might you well are, be though in the future, near future though. <laughs> yeah, oh mate, I'm sure your time will come. Give yeah. it time. I mean, I've, I've, yeah, I won't, rem I won't go too much into it. But, but I've, I've also spent time, um, incarcerated abroad as well. Mm. Um, really? Um, yeah, we'll perhaps talk about that off air at some yeah. point. Um, more than once in more than one country. Um. Yeah. Um, Have you seen that film? Oh, what was it? That was with John Hurt about the, the American that got caught with drugs going through the airport at Turkey in Turkey. What was it called? Yeah, something. I can't like think that. the name. No, yeah, it's, it's an interesting great. experience. Maybe I'll tell it one yes. day, mate. Orient so, Express. Was it Orient the, Express? No, something Express. No, something the Express. trouble. The trouble is, mate. The once you do something silly when you're young that is with you for the rest of your yes. life and i've been on holiday i mean me and my best mate we we knocked around together lived together for the best part of 15 years we've been all over the place together but we would never book our tickets together and he would always go ahead of me so he could see what happened and, and mate if we went at the same time for a passport thing He'd go through half a dozen other people would go through before yeah. they before I'd go through. I that will that mistake, we'll, we'll call it that, shall we? Will live with me for the rest of my life, mate. If I want to travel, luckily, I don't think I'm really that bothered about going abroad again, mate. And I'm certainly not going to have a biometric ID, um, and I'm certainly not going to surrender to any kind of facial recognition. 
and I don't think I'd even want to go through one of them body scanners that they've they've got at the moment, mate. Right. Um, I think they're quite potentially carcinogenic and, and not very nice. So, so for me, mate, it, it doesn't really matter now. But but kids, be careful what you do because hmm. things stay with you for a long, long time. That's why you need a Fockham Hall passport, you see, which is suitably available. Download, you better show the Fockham Hall passport. Yeah, mate, you stick it in the post and I'll use it. Yes, uh, well, actually, you better download it from website soon. I'm designing one. And on it, you see, you know you have usual photograph. Yeah. We've got unusual photographs that go, that is That's fantastic. (laughs) And it'll have um, on the front, I'll have uh, Roger ring the cat, the Prime oh. Minister of Fockham Hall. So, yeah. that, so, so, because you know, lots of diplomats like Roger ring the cat. So that's why we're going to yeah, put true. Roger ring the cat on the front. You yeah, see? yeah. So you've got to think of things like that. But absolutely, uh, no, I admire your uh, your your take on it, mate. Mate, it's the, it's the it's the right way. We've had this conversation before, isn't it? Hit it with humour, laugh at yeah. them as much as you can, and take the piss. Well, that's because right. Because they're but... taking the piss out of us, mate. I mentioned the other day in, in this chat room, that not this particular chat room, but in the, the uh, I think it was on uh, uh, Telegram, that um, the establishment has a kind of odour about it. And I found that out many years ago when, well, not that many years, um, when I was on a train in Liverpool Street, ready to come home, you see. Uh, I'd, um, on Fridays, I used to leave work a little earlier to avoid the rush hour. And you know those, and when you're an experienced traveller, you know, or commuter, I don't like using that word, but going back to work each day, you notice there's a carriage that has half first class and half second class. You get on that one and you sit in the second class because people think the carriage is all first class. It's a little bit emptier than the rest of the carriages, you see. Little tip. And the other little tip is always sit. Don't sit next to the window. Always sit on the seat next to the uh gang yeah, yeah. so it can yeah. be off first when the doors open so it's a little yeah. little tips like that. i was sitting but, there but, but you miss your window view then mate i mean I yeah, but any... i'm not bothered about being first off the train i just like if yeah, when you're train... traveling every day you see the view every yeah, day true, yeah true. yeah that but the true. thing is I, I don't know whether you're like this chris but i can't stay in cities and towns um i've got this phobia about them i i, I when i'm in a city i want to get away i want to get to the countryside gotcha. we, uh, and i just can't handle cities i, no, I just i mean 15 years ago down. mate i used to go down to london a lot i had a mate lived in kentish town mm-hmm. we used to go to a lot of gigs in london and um but i was always pleased to come home at the end of the weekend sunday mm. afternoon we'd be on the train obviously hung over feeling like crap but i'd always be really happy when we pulled in at Lynn and you got the cleaner air. Um yeah. London, I mean, Jesus, the the crap that comes out of your nose after half wow. a day in London. It's a shit um, on. It it's, is a shit on. It's maybe. overrated. I, I've yeah, never understood is. why people like it so much. I mean, um I actually worked next to most of the tourist attractions and never went in there. Didn't interest me. At all. Yeah, I don't. I walked past the monument there, every but... day. I never went up it. Couldn't give yeah. a shit. No, I've never been up the monument. But I've done a lot of the stuff like Madame Tussauds, Hamleys, Harrods, mm. um, the Natural History Museum, the Maritime Museum. I've done all that when I was a kid. And I did also that as well, kid. working as a support worker. Um, we mm. used to take guys to things like the Imperial War Museum and the Cabinet War mm. Rooms and all that. All the sorts of things that they like, we, mm. we go down to London for. But I haven't been to London now for at least four years, and it will potentially be, could even be four years before I even venture down there again, if I ever do, mate. It's like you say, cities are shitholes. There's no community in cities. Um, what, it's just the noise I live in, mate. The smell. Yeah, it's just, it's a stench, it's isn't it? And, and, where, and, and please, if anyone listening is living in a city, I'm not disrespecting you in any way, shape, or form. So um, everyone to their own. I much prefer the clean air of the countryside. Yeah. And where I live now, you don't walk past people and, and not greet them. It's it's mm. it's a given. Like Everybody that. says it. I love it, mate. Um, yeah, and, I like that as well. And, a, an hour's dog walk can take me and the missus two and a half hours sometimes because you'll just stop and talk to people for 15, 20 minutes on your way around. And it's lovely. It is nice. And also, in cities, you're breathing in air that someone's just breathed out. 
you sit on a seat that's all grimy and shitty. Someone with running sores might have sat on it. Probably and you're completely bit... disconnected from nature. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. And yeah. anyway, I was going to say, I was sitting on the train and yes, a very sorry, famous yeah. MP at that time got on the middle, it, 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 onto the concourse inside the train because the train was in the station, Liverpool Street Station, and about to turn left to go into the first class because you know that MPs get uh, uh, free first class travel. Of course they do. And he noticed somebody at the back of the carriage, you see. Now, a normal person would have gone through the down the central aisle and spoken to people. Oh, no, 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 no. There he was, hanging his hands over the two, two rails like this, bellowing to them and telling everybody how marvellous he is. And uh, well, he was so marvellous that he was actually fell from grace because he was found writing love letters to a 16-year-old schoolboy. But uh, we won't go into that. Anyway, there he was, saying, oh, all this, this, that, and the other. And I'm sitting there reading my newspaper, because I used to read the newspaper in those days. It was Eden Standard. I was getting real pissed off with him. And his shoulder, his side of his arm was a, sort of nudging against, coming into my space, my newspaper. And I was like, God, they're pissed off, you know. And there was a woman sitting the other side of the aisle. And I looked around at her. And she looked around at me. And she going, and she was getting bored up as well. And he'd go, and when the Sarsen got on, he'd say, do, would you like to come through? One bloke said, no, mate. I like standing stand here for the benefit of my bleeding health. What, what do you think I want to do? Oh, yeah. And then where you would normally, a normal <laughs> step into the main area, concourse here. Oh, no, 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 no. He leant across me like this, you see. So I got me yeah, I'm sort of like this. And <laughs> to the You're a better person, man than me, mate. I'd, yeah. have, I'd have flipped so, before, before you. And I got a whiff of ministerial armpits several times. Lovely. And it smelled of, I would say, stale farts, mm. gin with a hint yeah. of cabbage. And it reminded me of the headmaster's office when I was at school. I had the same smell. Council offices smell of it as well. And it's always yeah. the same. Stale farts, gin with a hint of cabbage and anywhere you go you get this sort of and it's an establishment pong and uh anyway eventually he when the train was about to start off he said oh i'll leave you peasants to it that's his exact words he said jokingly and nice. walked into the first class area and he said oh, of course i'll get paid for this and um the girl the other side of the other mate we just looked around at each other and she said oh my god and i can't remember exact words but it was God help us if that is what is actually in government. Yeah. God help it, all of us, mate. But yeah. don't don't vote for them. That, I think, is the... Again, oh, no. like, you see, people say, oh, you've got to, got to use your vote. You know, people died for it and all this. Well, no disrespect, but I didn't ask them to. And, um, yeah, it is... I think by engaging... It, it, wouldn't it be great if they held a general election and nobody fucking turned up? Apologies for my language, Chris. Yeah, Sorry. and the same with the but, war. Nobody turns up. Yeah, but <coughs> just an election, it would be beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see how the media would spin that one, you know. Um, but but that is, I mean, <coughs> I mean, this is kind of really linked to the theme, isn't it, that we were going to talk about tonight. It's, 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 you don't need a government. You just oh, yeah. need to be responsible for yourself, for your family for those people around you mm. and for society in general and really much pretty much in that order and look out, the other, look out for the other person yeah and look out for look out for people help people mm. as much as you can but start with yourself if you're if you're leading a, a dysfunctional life or a life that you know that isn't benefiting you that you're stuck in some kind of rut start with that i mean that's what i did i tackled the first thing i did was 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 and i'm not finished product mate i've i've got a long way to go a long long way to go but i'm doing the work on myself and i'm changing things in my life and and trying to be a, a, a better person a better variant of myself every single day you know trying to be better every day um does that mean that i'm perfect no of course not i'm far from it mate i still have a lot of challenges to to overcome but but that's where people need to start i think is 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 with themselves mate and and like you say you don't need clubs you don't need societies or anything like that you you just need it community doesn't mean that you have to form a club community just means looking out for the people around you people that you know are vulnerable 
um you know we really don't do enough of that mate and that's something that that we need to do we need to look out we don't need a state or anything like that you go to countries like mexico mate the government has very little clout in mexico most of mexico is run by cartels and in mexico they they don't have a massive problem with homelessness because people look after family you know if you've got a second cousin who's got nowhere to live and you've got space then that, that, that's just a given that they'll come and stay with you and we've lost that that's been driven out of us by 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 the way that we've been led um by the powers that ought not to be and and you know even in countries like spain and italy they've still got a far greater sense of family over there in terms with like you know if you've got an elderly relative that's sick then they will come and live with you they don't have many care homes mate in spain and italy um you know that the, the, there's a whole different but again that's being driven out of them by the by the eu isn't it they're trying to make europe all one big big space um and and we haven't left um we 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 we're still pretty much shackled to yeah. the eu we are. we're not we're, we didn't get what we voted for did we care humans are to me are inhuman because again it's putting you into a club and a category again yeah. and that that is the thing you see people say where will we be without government well civil government does not rule that is the ridiculous thing civil servants run the country yeah, of course they do and usually scammers yeah. financially control well they dictate to the country so we're paying taxes to pay back a loan to the usury scammers that doesn't exist yeah. mate so you're paying more every, money yeah look at every single government changeover in through your life has anything changed has there been any kind of revel revelation you know like oh my god look they got in and oh it was brilliant they did this they did this they did this they got rid of this they got rid of... doesn't happen does it mate all we get is more of the same yeah and I, that, I just... that's the thing um, um it... anybody that does change things i mean for example um when you look at uh the american civil war when lincoln introduced the greenback Green which back. was a debt free currency yeah uh, i have not got much liking for lincoln because no it, no no the size no, of the no. coin he was quite a nasty piece of work but apart he from was. that he did introduce debt-free currency well he tried didn't he he but tried and then um yeah that's it. And, and and every other politician with mm. i mean we've, we've touched on this before haven't we with mm. jfk and Gaddafi and mr h and every politician that's ever tried to to take on the banking system as, um, but but again, I don't rate any of them. I mean, JFK was no saint, mate. He wasn't a very nice man. I mean, look at what they did to Marilyn Monroe. Um, him and his brother oh. just pretty much like used her, used her up, didn't they? And then when they'd had enough, um, she threatened, I think, perhaps to start talking, and that was it, wasn't it? I think so, because I don't think she died a natural. I don't hey, think she she's died too, again. That's been blown out of the water. The nebby mm. toll that she was supposed to have taken could not have been taken orally. There was no yellow dye in her stomach. There was no capsule mm. residue. It looked like it had been administered via an enema, um, which would have shown bruising of the colon, which her autopsy did show bruising of her colon. Um, but it was never again. It was all just. The, 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 the police officer, the first guy on the scene, he thought it was a stitch up. He thought that he was being sold a lie by the, the doctor who told her that told him that she'd taken an overdose. There was no glass in the room. There was no the water in the bathroom next door to the room had been shut off. So there was no access for her to get water. And she was notoriously known to not be able to take tablets without water. Um, I think there's no doubt that she was she was whacked mate and why was it originally the housekeeper didn't she say she discovered her at 12 30 but didn't call the cops till half four in the morning there was no there was a four oh, it was, hour. It was very suspicious but also did you ever see that uh, birthday uh song that she gave to the president yeah really where, sexy, she, where, she, where yeah. she was really all over him um also you've got the bay of pigs in cuba that was a complete foul up and when you see what the CIA tried to do in Cuba, um, like, for example, they'd actually tie, tie um, uh, containers of fuel 
to the tail of a cat, catch light to the container, so the cat in terror would run across uh, a cornfield or something like that, and it catch the whole cornfield of field of light. Lovely. They did some horrendous things, yeah, and yeah, we'll some... Um, it, it, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't think there is really any pure good American president because to get to the top, to get to the top of the greasy pole, you're compromised. You've got to be. You've got pretty... to be compromised. You yeah. cannot sit in that chair if you are. If they've not got something on you, you're no good to them. You're no. not going to be there. Same in this country, mate. Same over here. They're, oh, they're yes. compromised in some way, shape, or form. They have to be. Otherwise, they don't get there, mate. Um, you know, well, in my opinion, in my opinion. But when you look at it, it is it is designed by and for psychos to get to the top. Yeah. The most and the system, the system has been designed so that somebody like you or me is never going to be able to do anything to, to get into it and change it. You can't beat the system in the system. We we spoke about it before, mate. The way you the way you beat the system is you just don't comply. You don't get violent. You don't need a group. You don't need a society. You don't need to form a club. You don't need to charge a subscription. You don't need to meet up. You don't need to do anything. You just need to stop and stop doing what they tell you to do. Uh, you right. know when you know and what that pissed me off so much mate during the sickness i mm. had mates that would go into shops and put muzzles on and they knew it was nonsense but they did it for a quiet life that wound me up that wound me up because i never wore a muzzle no i mean either mate. And I, actually, I actually found it quite liberating that i didn't was... mate i hated it i hated i don't like standing out mate i don't like being different i don't like confrontation um i had a lot of confrontation in that period of time i had people screaming in my face um i I, I, like I, I i had i mean constant dirty looks but then there was some beautiful moments as well i was stood in the a queue for the fag counter and one of the like oh cheerio hey. uh, almost uh, hey, we're back. yeah back. like a second hour standard normally normally second hour you had an early one last time didn't yeah you? yeah we got a, got a late um, one haven't we? Well, not that late, mate. We had one right on the two or hour mark one one time. I yeah. Think. So yeah. Um, but anyway, just quickly to finish my um, my, my point. By the way, can I cut in there? Uh, Fag is actually uh, a British. If you're watching from the United States, uh, is actually yeah. a uh, slang word for a cigarette. A cigarette. Yeah. And it doesn't mean the same as what it means in America. No, it okay? doesn't. Sorry. So I better, I better put that one in. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I was queuing up to get some tobacco. Oh, that's a good cigarette counter. <laughs> and um, as usual, I was the only one that wasn't muzzled. And it, there was a bit of a queue, and there was about four or five people behind me. And there was a lady behind me, and we made eye contact. She had a muzzle on. We made eye contact. When I looked around two or three minutes later, and we made eye contact again, she'd taken her mask off. And that Brilliant. felt like such a victory because she knew obviously knew it was nonsense and all she needed was to see one person who was prepared to stand up and not and and she was prepared to do it she she i don't think she'd have been brave enough to do it if i hadn't been there mate. but that was and that was right at the height of it as well when people were being yes. really really silly about it like i was getting challenged everywhere i went even places where I went regularly and they knew the deal, I'd still get challenged every really? time I went in there. So that was right at the height. So that that was rewarding, mate. That was a little a little victory. And that was because the, the only one that I had, I went into the, we got was it one below, which is like pound shop, right? And uh, there was the only place they didn't really challenge you. They were, didn't seem too too worried. And I was in there without my mask, and there was a lady, mixed race lady without her mask, we looked at each other and just grinned. Didn't say yeah, yeah. so grinned. Yeah, it was a lovely experience. We just yeah. went, yeah. yeah, you know, actions speak louder than words. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Really I'll tell you just quickly, I'll tell yeah. you who were brilliant about that as well locally for us. Me and my wife did a couple of food shops in farm foods, like yeah. stock up the freezer, and they were marvellous in there, mate. They yeah. really were. The staff were, because um, my wife's got COPD, so she's got like a real stat fast reason exemption you know mm. uh, anyone she you know got the blue badge the lot mate she it's it's it, mm. it, it, it proper does her in sometimes but 
you know, again, you're playing with fire if you're challenging someone with a disability like that. Mm. So she was, it was easier for her, I think, than it was for me because neither of us look like we've got a disability. I haven't got a disability, but I chose to be exempt as per the government guidance. There was nothing that I did that wasn't within the regulations, man. Same here. Same I, here. I, I, I chose that I was exempt. Um, and I, the, the, the good one that I, and I picked it up, I can't remember where I got it from. I got it from something I watched during the nonsense. And I was, I had a challenge from a security guard at store and he said, where's your mask? I said, I'm exempt. And um, I carried on walking. And then a couple of seconds later, I said, exempt from government bullshit. <laughs> I just carried on walking, <laughs> mate. And um, yeah, it, I didn't enjoy it. I've got to be honest with you, mate. I, I didn't, didn't enjoy it at all. That know, was I, one I, I of the horrendous. darkest periods of my life, mate. In terms mm. of my vibration was flat. I I struggled to... to I mean, I, I, I ended up finishing a career that I'd had for 10 years that I absolutely loved and thought that I would be doing until the day I retired. Mm. I never thought that I would not be doing what I was doing, working with guys with learning disabilities, running services, um... I, I thought that that would be me right up to the end, but it, it, it ruined it, mate. It destroyed that. Mm. It destroyed my peace of mind. I, the, the, the seeing how easily led people were, mate, was... I know. It, it, I, it, it is right. Until we had... There's a big um, uh, superstore, a uh, fair distance from where I live. It's about ooh, 40 minutes walk. And they had, it was just like out of the film, 1984, one of these huge screens on the side of a, 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 a lorry, blasting fear. It was parked in the car park. So yeah, as you yeah. queued up, you just got blasting of it. fear at you. You know, just in case you hadn't had enough. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, and, um, but... Uh, but no, I don't know about you, Chris. I mean, I don't know how I... My wife will tell you this. We had arguments about it because she saw it very differently from me from the start. But I saw through it from oh, the off. Straight, straight away. Yeah. Straight away. Like yeah. not, And I'm not being smug, mate, at all. The, the reason I saw through it was because I've been listening to people for a long time who were basically prophesizing that something like this was going to come. But the thing is, when it came, you knew this was the thing. It didn't. Within a day, I knew that this was this was it. it. wasn't what I thought. I thought it was going to be some kind of conflict or financial crash or something. But I was like, right, okay. If I'd have been alert to what was going on on 9-11, I'd, I'd have seen that. Because on 9-11, I called things out on the day there, like the buildings coming down. I remember mm. saying to my mate on the day, no way. That mm. doesn't happen. I said, you, you don't fly a plane three quarters of the way into a skyscraper and get a global collapse of dust. That's that's just that's oh, no. That was... But but at the same time, I was accusing the terrorists of putting the explosives in there. I wasn't wise enough to think. That oh, I knew it was. It, I wasn't telling us the truth, but I um, knew I was being from a building I knew, background. I, I course, knew that that was known, like, yeah, yeah, and because yeah. uh, uh, buildings don't collapse into their own. No. And mate, I did a little yeah. technology. So we did. Um, you'll you'll understand the concept of what I'm talking about. Force diagrams. So mm. you know you'd have a you'd have a a, a picture of a, a, a truss, and you'd have where the where the where the beams mm. were, and you'd have what force was pushing down, and you'd be That's given right. the force on this side, and you'd have Bending to work moments. out what force for yeah. equilibrium, which. For so I did all that mathematics, mate, at A level, which is we were told at the time that it was as hard as A level maths, the maths that we were doing. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, so I, I understand the concept of structures and how they work. And, and again, like that, I knew that part of it wasn't right. But it was probably another five or six years, mate, before I even knew about Building 7. And, and that's probably what started to wet my whistle, mate, back in 2007, mm. 2008. That was pretty much when I got went online, Chris. I wasn't on the Internet until that time. Really? And, and yeah, I had no interest in it, mate. And and to be honest, if it if it wasn't for for what I discovered in them first three or four years, mate, going down rabbit holes, um, when you could get information on the internet freely, you know, you could type a question in, in, into Google, and it would come up with a, a plethora of information. You don't get that now, mate. No. 
so no, oh it's, it's, it's all it's all very uh i mean i remember the days when you go onto youtube and you could see uh dennis wise not the footballer but the chap who did uh you spoke about him yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's actually been banned from uh, bit shoot as well i don't know how he is i know he was ill at some time so i don't know how right. he is now. but the thing is is that what gets me um this is why john hamer he, he's he's fed up with youtube and he advised me over a year ago he said look get off of that flaming youtube mm -hmm. he said, it's ridiculous but the big problem with youtube is a big crowd puller of course it is but and that's what we like we said before you've got to use it to your advantage mate yes and you can you can manipulate what's you know to get people to migrate to where you want them to be so you know i think use it like a, I say as a tool i mean we're, we're me and you are pretty good at I could tell i'm probably dropping I'm, I'm tear myself up here to screw this up tonight but we're quite good at at not saying the words that that, that we know that's that right yes. is going to be picked up on we're both quite good at that um i think most of your guests are mate to be fair wow. but how nice would it be just to be able to have a conversation and not have to self-censor or or you know because it is a problem mate because i think most people know what we're talking about most of the time but i'm sure there's times when we're jabbering on about something and because we're talking in some kind of code there'll be people that won't know what we're talking about well i'm and, even doing this 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 censoring uh, i was talking to my neighbor the other day and i sort of started doing this because i got so used to doing it's not saying the words and i'm censoring myself when i'm not on the internet which see, i think is dangerous that's, that's yes and no like, mate yeah. i have a rule i don't talk about any of my beliefs to my customers most of them are old I don't want to worry them and at the end of the day they don't really care what i believe all they want mm. is for me to look after their garden so we keep the conversation pretty light the ones mm. that a couple of them have tried to engage me in conversations about politics and things like that and i just basically go with the neutral ground that i don't do politics i i say i, I always Very say nice. to politics doesn't do anything to represent me so mm. i don't have any interest in politics um uh, one of my customers um he knows a lot more than the others but then i spend two days a week with him and um, we're mates now as well we're not just customer gardener we're mates um he cooks lunch for me every day that i'm there mate we um i'll tell you oh, what mate if it pees down with rain i'll still just stay there all day and sit with him but i won't charge him anything for it but i'll just spend the day with him just because that's how that's actually that is how it should be this is a bit like um when i go to see Dr. Miles Fleetwood in his shop. Um, it's very like that. It's as people walk in, it's very friendly. That's how things should be. Oh, absolutely. That's how yeah. life should be. Yeah. And yeah. I think this is what we're getting away from. I mean, and what of course gets we are. Me is this controlled opposition. Now, with controlled opposition, I've noticed two things that they do is one to depress you it's all depression or oh, it's getting really bad it's awful it's terrible yeah yeah and the next thing we can change things through the system no you yeah. can't because yeah. if changing things through the system is like thinking that you can convert the entire mafia over to jehovah's witnesses you probably have more chance of doing that because Mate. anybody with a conscience anybody that's good ain't going to get very far in the system the system's been set up to protect itself yeah. From, from anyone trying to interfere with it you're not gonna you, one of two things are going to happen in the unlikely event that you challenge the political system and you get elected one of two things are going to happen you're either going to get corrupted and you'll start playing the game the way they want you to play it or mm -hmm. you're dead precisely that's it and There's I think no that way. happens at low, low levels as well. Because, yeah, and this is why we don't yeah. need leaders, mate, because leaders are targets. We don't but need people targets. People want to be leaded, though, because I don't want to be a leader, mate. I, I, I don't know, no, but you notice people want to be want a leader because they've been conditioned to look up to a leader. So, to, yeah. And this is what, this is what gets you me, this irritates me. Yeah. Um, this, this looking up to a leader. I mean, for example, um, one of the reasons that I'm very anti-communist and, uh, you know, the Vietnam War, it was North Vietnam against six South Vietnam and the Americans were involved. 
But, it was America but, against Russia, wasn't it? Well, much. that's it in a way, but it was a North Vietnamese. So I had this system where you only had three people, a groups of threes in their forces, and they were just told what they needed to know. So if they were, if they yeah. were captured, they wouldn't be able to give any... They but, be, yeah. but this groups of three works very well, and that's how the um, Welsh nationalists started. And the yeah. Irish IRA, they copied. They did. They they actually copied from the Welsh nationalists how they did it. And it was this, but it is a it's a communist thing. But, but, and this is not but, communist. But, it's commune. Where That's, did my, yeah? I mean, where did that get them though, Chris? Where, where, where you know what did the IRA really achieve? Nothing. Um, some people would say, oh well, you got a peace group. You haven't got what you wanted. You didn't get what you wanted at all. You took a you took a wooden spoon um and 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 that was the end of that which again makes me feel like that was probably nowhere near as organic as what we they want us to believe and and the same with um what what was the other thing you said that you said about ireland and oh it was um well vietnam was it oh vietnam yes well vietnam again, look but who the... cares about the poor sods that died there who cares well, now yeah who gives a shit it's... They're our brothers and sisters, Chris. You know, Precisely. this is the thing. I, I'm hurting now because of what's happening in in the place we don't want to mention. It, yeah. mate, not in a not in a sycophantic way, mate. But this this there's a there's an there's a dark energy, mate, around at the moment. Um, oh, I think there anyone is anyone who's any kind of empath in any way, shape, or form, and I believe that I am, um, oh, and I believe that you are as well. Yeah. But you can feel. The, mm. the, the 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 pain at the moment may i i can feel it in the ether it's not good there's 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 a lot of suffering going on and breaks my heart mate because it, it does break my heart because it's innocent people and i was it's, talking to somebody it's kids, today 50 percent of them are kids well you did know? you know that the, that the country that they are bombing the crap out of uh, i think it's about 30 percent of christian Yes, they are thirty percent. Yeah, you spot on money. You're on the money. Thirty percent. And Christians. somebody was talking to me today, and they said, "Oh, I like to see the um, religion beginning with M, being not not for six. And I thought, "Shall I mention that?" What I just said. And I thought, "Nah." There's I no point know. with people not like that. Like, oh, well, I don't know. No, 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 Chris. Remember what yeah. Jenny would say. You've got to try. I think. Mm. Um, but 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 not like, you know. Just sometimes, just one little nugget is enough to get people yeah. thinking. Um, you see, the people like is, that potentially could be too far gone, mate. But the guys, it's, it's groups, isn't it? That that's the thing. Because I've often said, if you got decent, nice people from both sides to sit down, have a cup of coffee, they'd have a resolution within ten minutes. <laughs> Would. Certainly would. No psychos, just just no military people, just decent people want to bring up their children and family. Uh, Which is you, what you want... most of us want, isn't yeah. it? But deep That's down. Right. But the trouble is people are people are easily led. People yeah. like to have like we talked about before, the bogeyman. People like to have somebody on a pedestal as well. Mm. People like to and this is one thing I've struggled with as well in in, in, in this sort of like realm that we are in, in terms of the kind of people that perhaps we, 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 we listen to and, or we have listened to in the past. I mean, um, that, that people want someone to worship. Um, and, 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 yeah. and, and, and when that person that they worship says something that they disagree with, they lose their shit. Like you wouldn't yeah. believe. And that yeah. I find mate, I've, you've said things I don't agree with. I've listened to nearly everybody that I listen to will say something at some point I don't agree with. Mate, it doesn't mean I'm going to stop listening to them. Um, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to agree with somebody on 100% of the things that you discuss. Not healthy. It's not well, good, mate. I, I, I mean, one thing, I was brought up 100% pacifist. Uh, I wasn't allowed to play with guns. And right. don't believe in killing or anything like that. And I've changed. And I've changed in the last couple of years. Not because I like guns, I don't. But because societies that have had their guns taken away from them 
go into totalitarianism because and i'm not saying give loonies guns i'm not saying you know i mean america uh, yes loonies do have guns but in lots of states it's regulated where you have to have a certificate or something yeah but look at the trouble is who's doing the regulating mate it's the Precisely. government in it yeah you know That's it. whatever happens that. the government gets in yeah yeah but guns mate again like yeah we uh, but that was look at look at how i mean you're you're old enough i'm old enough i remember mm. hungerford mate yes i remember dunblane that's why we haven't got guns um because and and again don't believe that i i mean thomas hamilton the guy who um committed the atrocity in dunblane where for anyone who's not aware he went into a children's i think it was an infant junior school wasn't that's it and he went yeah. into a class and he shot potential i can't remember the numbers but teachers I think it was about, and the lot. yeah yeah i mean i think he killed about 20 kids and a couple of teachers i, I can't remember for sure that the exact numbers mm. but he did a lot of damage now he was a known pederast and he there was some kind of i'm not really sure it's been a long time since i looked at it but i, I there was some connection with him and mi5 i think um really? there was something it might yeah. not have been mi5 chris i'm not 100 percent, but there was something shady about him apart mm. from the fact that he was a paedophile um but there was something shady about him so what the and, and i mean that again my belief is that was a whatever you want to call it a false flag whatever but that well not in terms of like i believe children died I don't for one minute think oh, yes. those, yes, those family's think. pain is not real and my heart goes out. I wonder whether he was hypnotised or something to doing it. I don't know. Who knows? Don't... Who knows, mate? We know that the, our government is engaged in mind control experiments. We know this. We know that in the in the 50s, the American government deliberately infected black males with syphilis and watched them yes. die just so they could document and cured them and then reinfected them again as well and told them that they were being trapped for bad blood um so we know that governments do extremely um disturbing things to their mm. citizens so who knows what the score was with with hamilton well, but again, we'll probably never know in our generation, no no but what, what, I think, time. what i think what i think that was in my opinion that was that was that was done to to take the last of the guns off the people in this country mm. that had them the handguns um they got rid of the uh, rifles didn't they after hungerford um and again, who knows what was going on there? Well, um, but when you look at Switzerland, now Switzerland is one of the most armed countries in the world. Yep. I think every house has a has has, guns. Yeah. And they're armed to the bloody teeth. They are. When you the Swiss. But the crime rate any, is the lowest say, I think, in the world. Why do you think that is? Hmm? Because if you think that by breaking into a house, if you think the person in there might be armed and they might shoot you before you break... You're not gonna. You're gonna think twice about burgling houses, mate. That's right. And I don't like guns, mate. I don't want do guns. I. But we've got guns now, and I don't think making guns illegal benefits anyone other than criminals because it stops people like you and me who don't want to fall foul of the law. As much as we disagree with it, we just want to be left alone and get on with our lives. So I'm not going to go out and buy a gun because it's going to cause me a lot of trouble if I get found to have a gun however i'd love a gun because the thing is though you've got to be very very uh experience experience of using it because it can be turned around and used on you if you're not experienced using it. well this That's is the thing awesome. isn't it in america if you're <laughs> again talking about what the responsibility if you're gonna if you're gonna arm yourself in a country like america you've got a responsibility to receive instruction and training on how to use that weapon and, and and the other thing is, if you pull that weapon, you use it, mate. You don't ever pull a weapon and not use it. Well, that's so, it. But, but there is yeah. sometimes self-regulation. I mean, I'll give you an example. eBay. Now, I like eBay. And the reason I like eBay is that the people that sell on there are terrified of putting a, a foot out of line oh, because yeah. they will be kicked off of eBay. And that's Get their life. reviews, don't they? And yeah. I think that that is something where government is not involved. But it works perfectly and i've only had one bad deal off of ebay and that was my own bloody stupid fault because um 
I, I let the thing go for too long without receiving it. And then I said, well, send another one, which I should have done. I should have asked for the money back. And they didn't send the next one. So that was my own stupid fault. But we've got 60 people queuing up in chat at the moment. Wow. Let's have a little wow. dig. Let's so see. let's have a dig. I think <laughs> I'll start from the bottom and work back because that's usually the better way because I do apologize for not for not actually uh, reading out everybody's comments, but they are read after the show. So now I've got uh, Louis. Oh, hang on. Where have we got here? Uh, it's coming in so fast. Louis Wilcox, Wilcox says, most guns owned by criminals were once owned by governments. Well, on the ways. That's a good point. That's right. Good point. Well, and, guys, um, well. But when you look at, well, I'll give you an example. Did you know until 1921, uh, you could buy guns over the counter in this country in much the same way as you can in some states of America. I didn't know that, but it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. It was the 1921 of... Firearms Act yeah. uh, that actually um, outlawed, and it was hurriedly rushed through Parliament because you had a lot of um, uh, troops coming home from the trenches that are armed to problems. the teeth and knew how to use it. Um, it was on the verge of a, a revolution. Of First World War soldiers brought back souvenirs, didn't they? Oh, yes. Mm. And after the Second World War as well, but a little yeah. bit more careful after the Second uh, World yeah, War. Yeah, you had to be... Oh, that out when he's gone back. He's a lot end. of British Army service revolvers are still in a lot of lofts in the UK, mate, where they've been handed down from yes. granddad to, to, to son to, 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 to grandson. And um, I guarantee you there's a lot of people still got one of them in their lofts, mate. Well, though, the secret was, you see, and this is what lots of blokes did. You see, you had a registration number on the side of the rifle, as I said, and that stayed with you, and you had to hand it back. Mm. But didn't stop you picking up a gun from a dead person. Exactly, which is what a lot of them did, and also, yeah. obviously, trophies from the enemy. Uh, anyway, yes, Lugas. Dan, Dan's got Dan's an interesting chain. Dan, MC, nah, they're just all pedos. It's their perversion and insurance policy for control. I think that's what we said pretty much, Dan. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think, you know, like I say, I, they, they've got to be compromised to be there. Oh, yes. It doesn't necessarily. I don't think that some of them, I think it's probably gambling debts, money or an extra, just an extra marital affair that they've had that they don't want their wife to find out. But they're, they're, they're controlled. Mm. Definitely. Now, this is interesting. Dan, you see. <coughs> Mar Maria Abramovich, Ms. Gwizlene. Isn't that a strange name? Gilane. 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 Is it Gilane? Isn't it a strange Gilane. name? Yeah, it's, Gilane. it's, Gilane. it's Gilane Maxwell. She's Epstein's um, brother. She, well, she was his madam. I don't know what you want to call her. I would say. Um, but, but yeah, she was obviously um, Robert Maxwell's daughter, wasn't she? His youngest yeah. daughter. Um, and, um, yeah, very sinister lady i'm sure she i'm sure if you look you'll find if you look on the net i'm sure there's a picture of marina and Bra abramovich and Ghislaine maxwell together i'm sure there will be yes i'm sure that there is and i've got something to say about maxwell which might be very much interesting uh ancient ruby yeah now ancient rubies disagree with me but i'm not upset i've had many bad deals with ebay many mm. Yeah, so it's her, her the, the... I've not had much to, again if it, if it's something on the internet mate the missus is going to be doing it and I don't think we've bought much off eBay the odd yeah. um, thing I, I think we've had a few we've had a few Lego sets off there mate I think um, over the years really um, you like Lego oh mate I've got a room full of Lego upstairs mate I've been in the Lego for donkey's years I um we moved house so that I could have a Lego room that was part of it mate. Really? So we could have three bedrooms, yeah. And um, that's Jess's. Um, uh, you never heard of Better Boot, which was before. If anything happens to me, mate, sorry, mm. Chris, to cut across you. If anything happens sorry. to me, mate, I've got life insurance, so the house will be paid for. So Jess has got somewhere to for the rest of her life to live. But the in terms of like what I've said to her, in terms of she knows which sets up there are worth money and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There's, I probably I should probably shouldn't say, but there's tens of thousands of pounds worth of Lego up there, mate. Really? Oh, but but that's been amassed over a wow. long period of time, mate. I'm like, I, I I haven't had any new Lego, mate, in the last eighteen months, apart from birthday or Christmas, where I've been trapped. But I have we haven't had the money to buy Lego for a for a good couple of years now, mate. That's interesting because I actually, when I was a kid, I had a Better Builder. Now, Better Builder was before Lego, right? And well, I don't. I think it was the same time, but uh, I think Lego took over Better Builder. Right. It's called Better Builder. 
and the bricks were different you know yeah that i used to make little houses and things like that you know oh mate it's like a meccano there's meccano was what my stepdad had he tried to get me into meccano but i never really the trouble is yeah lego is just a little bit kind of like you can do a lot more with the lego because mm. um, you get the technique Lego as well, mate. So you can build gear mechanisms and, and work in lifts and all sorts of crap. One day offline, mate, I'll show you the Lego room. That'll it's be insane. interesting. Yes. It is insane, mate. It's a mess at the moment, as it always is um, this time of year, because I haven't pretty much, I haven't been in there more than half a dozen times in the last six months, mate. It's a winter thing. Yes, yeah, so I've got things to do in the, in the winter, you know, but... Uh... Yeah. I'm a sort of winter. I don't like. The thing is, I actually find that when the when it's dull and the weather's bad, it doesn't give you much incentive to do anything, does it? Really? No, it's, it's no, just, no. You know. It, it, but, sorry, Ruby. Really, yeah. Yes, the world is truly staged, and also the weather. I agree oh, with yeah. you. Yeah. Ancient, we know really, that yes. they've had they've had a grip on the weather at least since the, the Second World War. Yes. Um, there was that flood in Lynmouth and Devon where those 26 kids or whatever it was that were... were That's killed. right. 1953, that was wasn't it? 1953, was it? Yeah, the same year. And it's year. funny enough, that was actually on Facebook today. Right. Not Facebook, uh, Telegram today. That yeah. was an RAF weather experiment. Mate. That's it right. It's called Operation Cumulus. That's it. Yeah. Now, it says here, uh, Ancient Ruby says, soon all the police will be armed. I think they really are. are, Ruby. They've all got tasers and that round here now, so they're mm. not far off. No. Um, but, yeah, yeah. again, the military, look at how the police have been militarised over the last 20 years. Mm. Like, they, I mean, you used to, you used to have some fantastic coppers in Lynn. When I worked in retail, mate, we had some smashing local bobbies, like, um, about mm. the town. Um top blokes you know they knew the crack um and and they were real people you could you could talk to them the the yeah. ones that i've had engagements with in the last three four years mate proper little twats um and and like i've i've had to i've had a copper in my kitchen in this room we're in now mm -hmm lecturing me a 23 24 year old kid lecturing me about the use of cannabis in my own home like honestly like really like it's they, unbelievable isn't they've it? forced their way in on two or three occasions without warrants it's it, it, mate they, they are a law above themselves now and it ain't even worth oh. complaining mate it just you see the traditional coppers uniform with, a, with i never liked that helmet thing but it was it was a thing they were a servant of the people exactly that we had a local no, bobby in the village. no we had a local bobby in the village when i grew up he knew us all kids he knew us all by name we were little scrotes he knew that but he also knew that we weren't bad people and um, the way he used to deal with us was take us home to our parents and tell them what we've been caught doing he didn't need to do anything else. And then he just, he knew the, 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 the lad I used to knock around with, that I used to get into the most trouble with, his parents were scousers. He was a scouser. Mm. And he always used to get dropped off first. And his mum, while well, we were, the copper used to sit, we used to sit in the squad car for a good two or three minutes after he dropped my mate mm. off so he could watch him being chased around the front yard with his mum with a broom. And she would be swinging at him with this broom, mate. And then he knew that I was going to get it when I got home as well. Mm. And he dropped me off. And nine times out of ten, my stepdad would be in the garage at the front of the house with a door open. That's where he spent 90 percent of his time. Mm. And he'd come out and he'd be like, what's he done now? And he'd tell him and he'd be like, right, I'll take it from here. And he knew that I was going to get a hiding the copper. He didn't need to do anything, mate. Uh, they were human beings. And also they used to drink in the local pub. So they knew who all the criminals were. They knew who they were. And they would, and uh, also the local they press. They still do now, Chris, though. They know every mm. single person in the UK that's selling every kind of dope. They know. They, and also the local press. They've all our mobile phones, mate. So they will know. Yeah. If somebody's selling any kind of dope, they will know about it within 24 hours of them accessing and using the phone that they're doing it from. Well, that's right. And, and what gets me, though, once upon a time, the local press used to give the police the tip-off of things going on. And the police used to give them snippets of information as well. They used to work hand in glove with each other because 
uh, true investigative reporters would find, sometimes find out more than the police did, and vice yeah. versa. So they used yeah, to help when we had real journalists, mate. Yeah, back when we had real journalism, but yeah. that's that's been gone a long, long time, mate. Oh. Um, I don't think there's been true journalism or not much of it in my lifetime. Um, oh no, it's journalism, isn't it? Because they just churn through a load of shit. Yeah, it's just it's just nonsense, isn't it? Who else have we got, mate? Come on. Right, we got yeah. What have we? We uh, I'm only about... rapidly running away from us again. It Chris. certainly is. It's mental, isn't it? We have the right to disagree with others' opinions. Hundred percent. But no it. one has the right to tell others what their opinion should be. Yes. I, yeah. Totally. I I Scott totally resonate right with that. That is. On. Yeah, and and you shouldn't fall out with someone because you see something differently. Um, you know, unfortunately, hmm. I'm sure we all lost people in the last three and a half years. Hmm. Um, I did. I mean, I mean, me and my best mate, we drifted apart for a period, but I'd say we're all right again now. Um, but I think he found me very difficult, um, especially in the beginning, because I wasn't Ooh. having it from day one, and and. And I think that upset a lot of people. Well, what gets me is that um, YouTube are now showing propaganda adverts for a certain country that we won't mention. But I'll just put that might give it might might give a little <laughs> subtle and a brick, Chris, very think. subtle. You see, I'm very subtle. <laughs> there. And um, so, surely, as that's propaganda. Wouldn't that be uh, against community standards, against community whatever it is? But because so surely that's happened. propaganda. I mean, um, you know, you've got to investigate what is truth, and the first casualty of war is truth. So Thank I you. don't know what's true, and I don't know what's Thank lies. You. And as I said, was it the other week? All wars are fought by uh, forgotten heroes forgotten for lost heroes. causes. Yeah, absolutely. But I think they did a fantastic job with YouTube because what they did was they when they when they started it, it was a, a bastion of, of, of free speech. You could go on there and say pretty much anything and you'd be fine. And they got everybody in the same place. They made it so that everybody just went to the same video sharing site. Mm. And trying to break that now is is proving tricky for a lot i mean i know that there's some people i see on bitshoot that have got up to a hundred thousand subscribers but if they had that channel on youtube they'd have five million mm. you know um but the only way we're going to beat youtube is by stopping using it or using it against them using it for your benefit we're going to use it as an advertising platform of course like like you do the shows. that's what like, i'm doing yeah. with because BitChute, did you know, yeah. my audience on BitChute quadrupled the other Mate, week. You got three hundred and fifty-two the last time hits on that, and I still haven't watched it yet, mate. The thing that you put straight onto BitChute, so yeah. that'll be three hundred and fifty-three at least, mate. Because I will watch. Oh, thanks, it. mate. That's great. Mate, I just haven't had the time, mate. It's been because you know. Quit on tangenting again, mate. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Obviously, we had some crappy weather, didn't we, last week? I mean, yes. here. I missed half oh, the day. Oh, blimey, last Wednesday, I mean, it was, it, it was like a monsoon. Here. I got six hours in on Wednesday last week. That wasn't too bad. It was mm. Friday, mate, here. Friday, it really? bucketed it down all day. And I mean, I, and I mean, proper rain. And mm. I I phoned my chap who I normally spend Fridays with. I, I rang him at nine and I because I'm normally there by half seven. But there was no way I was going half seven on Friday. So I rang him at nine. I said, look, mate, I said, we'll give it another hour. But I said, if not, I'll come tomorrow. I'll come Saturday instead. I said, the forecast is better for Saturday. So anyway, we we decided at 10 o'clock that I will not go in and I'd come Saturday. Bloody Saturday morning, mate, pissing it down again, weren't it? But I thought, sod it. I'll go and have a go, you know, because I don't want to cry off again. But, mate, I got two hours work in maximum. And ended up coming home again so um because of that like i'm just behind mate with my work so i've been i understand that but it... I mean, I, I, i've got this big fishing hat though i wear a fishing hat you see and sometimes i wear a poncho a german army surplus poncho 
and this has got this bloody great thing over but it keeps you nice and dry it, it would but mate you'd struggle to do a lot of the things i do gardening in it i know you can't you can't work in it you know I mate, all the it, it depends what you're doing and where you are but yeah basically i haven't watched your thing yet mate because i'm i'm still i'm about I understand. Three or four I, I, days I, behind with the work at the moment and it's a couple of couple of weeks sometimes before i can see them because you know i'm pretty busy but oh fact, mate just yeah. one thing sorry just while we're on comments yeah. your chap in siam what's his name john john what the, that was a lovely comment mate thank you john for what you put on bit shoot mate that was he that always was, puts fantastic yeah comments. that was, and he that can't was comment lovely, though on uh, youtube because they're censorship over this so it does it on pitch here. yeah but I, I mean just thanks john great feedback mate really appreciate yeah. your comments um and, and very and, and... very good advice he gives as well yeah yeah mate i read i read i read i don't respond because i just mate, i don't know I understand um and i i try and avoid spending as much time online but i do look through and read the comments on and, and i'm gonna sound like a right knob now but i do watch each one of these interviews back at least once just to make sure I don't look like a complete knob docky on a mate or anything like that. So very, you're very professional. You, you do well, well, mate. I found that, like, I, I, I mean, I, I watched the first one the other day a little bit of it again, and I, mate, I think we, we, it's like we've. It took us a couple of shows, but once we got that kind of flow, now yeah. it's a lot more. Me and you, it's a very natural conversation now, mate. I yeah. like the way that. That the conversation flows when I speak to you, mate. With gel, and I mean, yeah, uh, and, and it's something that I think to myself: yeah. if it wasn't me, I could still listen to it. You know, I feel like it's yeah. it's a conversation that that people can listen to; they might get something from it. You know, it's not; it mm. didn't it didn't feel like to me it would be a chore, although I'm sure it is for some people. I apologise for those people. Well, you Deb, can never please everyone. Oh, can't please everyone, but Deb, she 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 also gelled very very well. Deb we, would have been brilliant because this is the thing, mate. Where I think where Deb would be brilliant with me and you is Deb would reel me and you in. Yes. And that's what me and you need is we yes. need somebody with a fishing rod to just reel us back on uh, on a topic. That's right. Um, and and also somebody who would bring up comments as they came in so that we would know because that's the other thing we struggle with, mate. Is we'll read comments sometimes and we can't remember what we were saying when they were coming in. Well, let's have another one, mate. Let's have on. another one. Now we've got, uh, we got here. We got Stephen the truth seeker said, "I can hear Chris, the gardener, stop <laughs> chewing on a boat." No, actually, that's the postman's leg, the ex-postman's hey, leg. Stephen, that's right. Uh, you now, mate. They're no longer got a postman. You. We're going to treat you all. Look, uh, where is he? Oh, can you see him? I just saw his bum just disappearing <laughs> underneath the. Right, oh, hang trying. on. Where are you going? Right. Oh, what have I done now? Uh, now we're down uh, in a coal mine. We can hear wait you, we can't second, see you. Mate, wait a second. What have I done? Oh, you switched okay. the camera off. I've, I've, mate, I've done worse than that. I'm looking at my wife's emails at the moment. Um, oh, right. I've got to just figure out, like, mate, I'm just going to go to the lounge because she'll know how to get it back. I okay, well, I'll be it. reading out some more comments. You read out some yeah. comments. Uh, Sean Hamer says, I saw a quote that said Satanism. Is no more than storytelling. That's interesting. Sorry, yes, and um, Stephen Truth says, know, "Yes, this is just the gardener's customs. Nearly as old as Chris." Uh, yes, I, I guess that means me. Oh, here we are. We're back again. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah we're so, just looking up your nose. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Right there we go. Right. <laughs> That's what happens when I try and show you the dog. Look, look. Here we go. We're we'll quickly. He's there. Can there he is. There? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, greetings. He's, he's there. Hello. So he has yes. got a bone, Stephen. You're absolutely spot on. Um, that's that's right. how we keep him quiet when we do the podcast. Uh, that's yeah. what happens to uh, hairy ass politicians that come to your house and also Jehovah's Witnesses, isn't it? I think oh, uh, no, they I end up. No, 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 no. The, the religious ones, mate. I always invite them in. I make them a cup of tea. I like having a, I like having a we, chat to them, yeah. We have an agreement that they're allowed to speak, but them I'm allowed to retort. And mate, I love it. I, I've had yeah. some brilliant engagements with some. The Mormons are the ones I like. They're um, they're always really young chaps, and they they call it missionary work. And mm. they come over to the UK, mate, for a year, and they're only allowed to speak to their family on Christmas Day the whole time that they're here on the phone. They can write letters, 
but they're only allowed to speak to their family once a day on Christmas wow. Day. And these are like 16, 17 year old lads, mate. Oh, and I'll tell you what, I forget all the because inevitably you invite them in. You have a bit of Bible talk and then they'll start to open up a bit more. And I'll tell you what, mate, they're fascinating. Um, mm. I love people, mate. I don't care what, what, what people they subscribe are nice. to. People say it always horrible, but that people are generally very nice. Yeah. I've actually they found... believe in what they're doing, mate. They believe yeah. in it. They, they're doing to them. They're doing a righteous thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I could easily just shut the door in their faces and tell them, but, I don't know. I'm just fascinated by people and their lives and their stories, mate. So I invite them in, mate. I'll make them a cup of tea and I'll let, I'll let them have That's a go. Nice. They're yeah, never going to change me, mate. So, ah. but why not? Why not? Just talk to people, engage with them, mate. Open your mind. I'm always polite Listen to somebody you disagree I'm, I'm, with. I'm not even rude to politicians, but they mm. clear off very, very quickly because I usually yeah, I can't, one sentence is. What is your government going to do regarding usury? Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah, off they go. yeah exactly. No, no yeah. I'm afraid I have been rude to politicians in the last five years. Yes, your customers are nearly as old as Chris. Nobody's that old, Stephen. No, no one's old as that. No. Actually, I've got some that are in there. Like I've got, I've got one that I went to see today. She's 93, bless her. Um, she's wow. got leukemia. She has blood transfusions oh. every two weeks, mate. I, she ain't going anywhere anytime soon. She's incredible, mate. She's a lovely old girl. Um, we just, um, yeah, went popped in and saw her today. Um, they're marvelous, mate. They inspire me, all of them, because they're they're just so full of wisdom. And yes. and, and this is something we again as a society we do not value our old people. Oh, more. put them in, Granny. Oh, really man, it breaks my to me, mind. I think that these people, I mean, in, in tribal uh, communities, like in you know different tribes in Amazon, uh, the elderly are looked on as uh, they're, they're worshipped all her because they're wiseness. Of course, they're the wisest people on the planet. Well, apparently, when there's tribal wars against each other, that the elderly women would walk in to the other tribe and they wouldn't be touched and have peace negotiations to stop the good. Because yeah. Like what they discover, I, I looked into this quite deeply once because um, when you look at aggression, uh, we are conditioned not to hurt each other because if we was society, uh, the, the, the be society ended, would, that yeah. was it. Yeah, so no we have, way. I think it's the frontal zone, frontal mo, no, frontal zone, where we will not. Is it the hippocampus, something like that? That's around the back. Right. Uh, that prevents us. Sorry, I'm not. A, a, I'm not. That, no, uh, I'm not, good we're not a brain yeah, expert, brain, but it actually stops us from killing each other. And they reckon that when there's tribal conflict, now in the, I think it's the Solomon Islands, uh, they had tribes that were always, uh, they're, they're always doing all this and, and posing and that, but very few people were hurt. It's all posing and all, you know, all this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Like, and like the British missionaries got there and they introduced cricket. So what they do now, they just play cricket. That's like the war. Against each yeah, other, they just yeah. play. Oh, it's very British, isn't it? Yeah, all sort of little clap, that's, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's what we should all do, mate. Maybe we should all just have a game. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love? It? I mean, I love cricket, mate. Me and my old flat mate, <laughs> we used to love a test match. Five, I'd book five days off work, mate, and I'd just sit on my ass. And if it was in Australia, we'd stay up all night and watch it on Sky, mate. And we'd just oh. sit there on our backsides for five days. I, I, I our mate. There's something special about a test match. But when there you really think is. about it, it's very, very British. But what they found out is that um, there was a survey done, and I think it was on an Amazon tribe, and they discovered that the ones that went out hunting and the sort of he-men ones weren't the men that, shall we say, boosted the uh, tribe of numbers. Oh, right. It was the ones that stayed home who were the, shall we say, didn't like hunting very own. much, a bit wimpy. They're the ones that boosted had, the tribe because they, they with all the women. Right. And maybe, maybe the beefy ones were on steroids, Chris. Maybe that's yeah. And I, the beefy ones, that, they were too cream cracker when they came out from hunting. Exactly that. Didn't have them. the energy for it, mate. They didn't have the, the energy for it. But the blokes that were repairing the huts and the old boys. They were... Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is that it was the women, the elderly women that stopped conflict because mm -hmm. they would walk into the opposing tribe yep. 
and in they Latin wouldn't America, touch them, mate. In because Latin America, they would have yeah. respect for the elderly. They wouldn't touch them. I was going to say, in Latin America, mate, women are very much the the, the kingpins of the families. They're the ones that that, that resolve conflict. They're mm. the ones that will will take care of family business in a lot of places. They are more dominant in a lot of ways than than what the the men are. Um, I often think, I wonder how different the world would have been if we'd have women in charge for the last hundred years. I don't know, but we had Bodicea, didn't we? She was around your way, wasn't she? Bodicea. She was around my way. Oh, Boudica. 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 Boudica, I think Boudica. we call her. Yeah, Boudica. Yes. yes, she was. She was an Iceni, wasn't she? We've got just up, well, just up the road, about 30 miles from Dersenham. There's a place called Swatham, and there's an old Iceni village there, and there's a thing called the Iceni Project where they, I think they've got a couple of wind turbines and crap like that. But, but yeah, there's, there's, that's, um, that is part of our local local heritage. You are spot on. But Queen Boudicca, the one shown on the embankment, was a Victorian thing they did. She did not have knives coming out of her chariot, which is crap. The right. horses were wrong because they had different horses those days. And chariots were used like taxis to ferry the troops to the fighting area. And then they and would then retreat they from and... chariots and then bring more troops on. They were actual taxis. They're not, they, weren't, they didn't really go into battle with them. I think Pretty some... Much. Fits in with most of what we always talk about, doesn't it? With the fact that yeah. nearly everything we've been told is a lie. It is. It is. It is. Now, we've got Mark Antony. I read a book called... <coughs> well, I won't read those words out. In 2012, when the Divock unfolded. Uh, you know what I mean, backslang. I knew it was BS. But sadly, a lot of my family and friends fell for it. Yes. yes. I feel your pain, Mark. I, I, I think... Yeah, we all went through that, mate. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was you, you felt quite alienated. Hmm. Now, um, 2020 was the year MK Ultra came through the screen and uh, instantly recruited. I won't read the rest of it out. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I think I'll is, be very is, careful. Is, is, is on the money there. I think that yes. again. You look at 2001. Like David Icke wrote a book about that, didn't he? he called it the trigger, and I think it, that was a good analogy for yeah. it. It was the trigger, and 2020 was another pivotal point in terms of the agenda, um, changing pace, moving forwards. My take on it was that it wasn't the real event; it was it was the tester. I, I agree with that, you. I think the real event is still waiting to come. We're oh, we're, yes. we're not out of it yet. Uh, now, Louise Wilcox says they can hide the truth as much as they like. It will still bite them on the arse. I would agree with you there. What yes. was it Buddha said, Chris? There are three things that cannot be hidden. The sun, the moon and the truth. Correct. Yes. And I'm no and, fan of Buddhas, but that, that is a very, uh, uh, quite a poignant statement. Well, I always believe, I mean, people have accused me of all kinds of things. I mean, I, I had my... Um, Reputation, everything. So I, I, I was actually uh, people accused me of lying and all kinds of things like that. But in hindsight, it doesn't matter because the truth always comes through. Exactly. Yeah. And when the truth is on your side, you just you, wait. Just time. Yeah, you can throw as much mud at me as you want, mate. I know yeah. why. Now it says here, uh, Sean Hamer says the only thing that surprised me in the years was the mass uh, capitulation of illogical and abusive demands. We saw from that year. Yes. Um, now, yeah, it says, yeah, uh, ancient Ruby says, Sainsbury's are little Hitlers. You're going to have to elaborate a little bit more on that one, Ruby. Would you go in there and say, I want something over there on that shelf, please. And how high is... Maybe, uh, maybe where is the flower? Oh, it's, it's over there. And it's about that yeah. high off the shelf. Yeah, Perhaps sorry. they've started an extensive line of um, sausages or something. Uh, I, I'm not I sure. Know. But you're going to have to give us a bit more, Ruby. Louis Wilcox. Now, this is something oh, special. So right eh? with you now. Gotcha. Farm so, yeah, food like never changed me once. Food. No, they were brilliant. And if if she went to the one, probably the same one that I did in Lynn, um, they were brilliant in there. They were they made you feel comfortable about not having a mask on. They didn't. It was no. There was no beef, none whatsoever. And that I appreciated that at the time. Now, because... it's just, 
well it seems like that yeah well it, it's funny we don't have a farm's foods around here what they like they could firm they mean so uh, cheap and cheerful mate if you want to top your freezer up they're pretty decent but yeah mm. no pretty much the same do you have iceland yeah i have iceland yeah yeah same same mate same I, thing yeah really iceland the... sausage is nice I worked for Iceland, mate, for six, six and yeah. a half years. So um, I've I've eaten a lot of Iceland food. But do you know I, what? What? Go on. Are they, are they very good food to work for, are they? Right. Well, I worked for them at completely the wrong time. So when I worked for them, they were a privately owned company. They were owned by a chap called Malcolm Walker, and he had a partner, Peter Hinchcliffe. So they owned the company. And within about a year of me starting working there, they floated on the stock exchange and it became horrendous. Really? And it was one of the reasons I left was because every year, because you know what happens when companies go on the stock market, mate, it's yeah. all about profit. Everything yeah. else goes out the window. It's about dividends and profit and making more profit year on year on year on year on year. And the only way Iceland could do that was to cut costs. So every year the staffing hours would get 20, 30 less. So you'd lose like a full time member of staff each year. And it got to the point where as a uh, as a, a deputy manager, I was working from six o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. And the bit between six o'clock in the evening and 11 o'clock was filling the bloody shop up because I didn't have the staff hours to, to keep it full during the oh, day. No. So, um, but Malcolm Walker bought the company back off the stock market. And I think his son owns it now. And by all accounts, I never met Malcolm Walker. Um, I've seen bits of him on TV mm. and I've, I've, I know people that met him that worked for the company. He seemed like he was quite a decent bloke. Um, I mean, they, they were giving away hummers to their managers and things a few years ago, weren't they? They were right. voted one of the best companies to work for, I think. They, the they, they were. I mean, the one near where I live is a shithole. <laughs> mm, a lot of them are, mate. A lot yeah, of them are. But they do, what they do is it's free for... Three, four, I used to do some outrageous three, offers, mate. We used to do a thing where you bought a chicken for a fiver and you used to get like seven or eight things free with it. They used to call them giveaways. Um, yeah, they do giveaways, some right? Mental yeah. special offers, mm -hmm. mate. Anyway, we have again, right? Bring we us got, back. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what chat that's what got us, mate, yes, onto the onto true. the Iceland, yes. Uh, and the local sweet shop, um, sweet shop, uh. <laughs> Is that a sweet shot or sweatshop? I think Got it's more sweet than shop. it could chew yeah. from me when I went in with my daughter. But it might be sweet shop, yeah. I, I used to actually sometimes, depending on the person, I used to have a joke. Someone says, "Have you got a mask?" My reply would be, "Why have you farted?" You know, or something like that. <laughs> so I give them a, or I'm terribly sorry, I don't sell them. Try yeah. Like. You know, yeah. So give them a response that they don't expect. You know, I just used to hit them with no thank you. That's that would pretty. be it. If I got asked if I'd got a mask, I'd just say no, thank you, and just carry on walking. And well, like, I, I had yeah. some perfume fart on on stilettos walk over to me whilst I was, I was queuing up in Barclays Bank. To um, banks were really they made I oh was, right of the times they and were this, insane. They loved this. It. Um, you know the type. You know the stilettos, mm. bit yeah, overweight. Yeah, standard. Yeah, and then the she came along with like bank. box of. I thought it was a box of Scotties, you see. And I'm standing there in this queue waiting to go to the machine to get some money. For some unknown reason, they stopped you queuing at the machine outside. You had to go inside. So like, yeah, they did some weird things. And they? she said, Excuse me, it's your boss, sir. So I said, um, I'm exempt. And then she carried on. And I can't remember the full details. And I said, look, I'm sorry. Uh, this Because, you know, uh, the, uh, you can get fined. Because it's nine thousand pounds. Nine thousand pounds. So I had it actually piece oh, of paper. I got it out. And she didn't even read it. She just walked off. Walked off. Yeah. 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 I said to you before, mate. I had it all up on my phone, ready yeah. for anybody that challenged me. And I just read off the government website, and yeah. Um, yeah. that did it. Any time you, you, you know, I tried to avoid talking to people. Uh, uh, I, we became very insular, me and my wife, during that time. Sorry, back I, to Sean's I, comment. I, 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 be, I became insular as well. Jonestown was a blueprint for everything we are seeing currently. Absolutely. Good, good, good point, yes. Sean. Good point. I mean, that, um, for anybody who doesn't know, was a that was a CIA MK Ultra. Um, I'm pretty sure that that was, that was run by the CIA. 
um, it was a, a pastor called Jim Jones who set up a community in, where was it, Chris? Was it Guatemala? Or oh, Guatemala? somewhere like that. Jim Jones, somewhere, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in South America. So he set up this community and it was supposed to be like a religious sect kind of thing. They all thing. committed suicide, didn't they? Well, mm, that was the rumour, wasn't it? I mean, that's what they want you to believe. But if you actually look, I think mm -hmm. what the... Um, pathologist the local whatever coroner he said that um hundreds of the people actually had needle marks on the back of their shoulders where they wouldn't be able to reach to administer it themselves so it was most probably a lot of them were murdered um there was also mm. some discrepancy where initially they said it was 400 dead 700 in the woods didn't they had run out mm. into the jungle and then that changed and it became um they said that there was 900 dead and they said that they'd found bodies um, on top of bodies. So that they, like the 400 bodies had hidden the 500 mm. makes no sense at all. So that again, stinks to high heaven. There's a lot about it that doesn't add up or make sense, but basically, yeah, what happened was there was a con congressional inquiry, wasn't there? And mm. there was um, a Senator was sent across to check it all out and see what was going on. And it was during his visit that people were trying to, and there were reporters there as well, and people were passing notes to these reporters saying, please get us out of here. Some people tried to leave. There was a shootout, wasn't there? Or um, shots were fired. The senator was killed, wasn't he? But there was an interesting chap that was on that visit. I can't remember his name. It was a long but time ago. He was a CIA plant, if you like, and he was sent to mm. keep tabs on everybody that was there and before the senator was shot he kind of peeled away from the group as if he knew that that tractor with them gunmen was about to turn up um strange isn't it yeah that mate that thing stinks of mk ultra jonestown i mean they found a, a footlocker i think with enough forazine which is one of the drugs that they use mm. in mk ultra they obviously used lsd they use forazine um, and they said that there was enough doses in there to keep a, a, a city of 100,000 people high for a year, pretty much. So there was a massive, um, yeah, he used a lot of, um, he used to play, didn't he, his voice over loudspeakers 24-7, tapes of him, his rhetoric was played over the loudspeakers 20 that's how you brainwash people i was just you about just to say that's classic on. cia mm. mk ultra that is yeah. mate that is so yeah jonestown that's a great thing to bring up and and totally relevant mm. to what we what we're talking about because we are in jonestown mate yes yes you're, you're right who knows what they put in our water chris who knows what they spray from the skies on top of us well, sometimes there's some funny... Have you noticed there's some funny smells? I'm being yeah. serious here. No, sulphur. I've had the smell of sulphur a few times when I've been out in the Washing smell. powder. I well, mean, I, I, I'm sorry. sorry. And I know nobody's doing their washing. I mean, this is early in the morning. Yeah. Funny smell. And, Who knows, uh, mate? What, what's, this, what's, in them, what's in that crap that they're spraying in the skies, mate? Who knows what they're doing to us? Oh, that's right. Uh, now, this is an interesting one. Um... Stephen Truth said yeah. the Kennedy are an Illuminati family. Pretty sure they are. I think they're one of the um, bloodlines that Fritz Springmeier um, put in his book, Bloodlines of the Illuminati. I'm sure the Kennedys are one of them. Yes. yes. The other one is, uh, Sean Homer said, they filmed the jazz <laughs> tape twice, one using a dummy, hoaxology. 101. I'd be interested to see anything that you've got that backs that up, Sean. I, I, I'm not disputing you, my friend. I'm just saying I would need to see something that would... would, would Have you seen the one with the driver where he turns around yes. and it looks as if he's shooting him? It looks he like, yeah. yeah. It looks okay. like it, but there's lots of shadows. But and they lots do of... this, Chris, don't they? When they yeah. play uh, an operation on us, they will make sure that there are multiple possibilities so that then we carry on fighting amongst ourselves about which one of them is the, is right it doesn't matter it, yeah. you know anyone with half a brain um who's read anything about jfk knows that the guy was 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 whacked there's there's no doubt and it was most likely the deep state that did it however don't be thinking that jfk was some kind of saint who was going to say oh no he wasn't because he wasn't far from it and he also wasn't. you notice that johnson who's the next one he, LBJ, yeah. 
Yeah, he did not duck. duck. He just sat there. He was in on it, mate, I'm sure. It was, and they he reckon was it was it. Um, George Bosch Sr. Yeah, yeah. He was the head of the CIA. Yeah, he was, was, the he was pictured guy. outside the book depository building on the day of the shooting. Um, there's a photo of him, blatantly him. He, he's got his hand in his pocket the same way that George Bush put his hands in his pocket. Looks like him. And yeah. he coincidentally cannot remember where he was the day that JFK was shot. He must be the only person in the world that was over five years old and alive that can't remember where they was. Precisely. Precisely. We all remember where we were on 9-11, don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, this is interesting. That's it. Um, Bob Hollyoaks says Mexico cartels tax people less than the government. They do. do, yeah. And did yeah. you know that medieval, sorry, most medieval no, no, peasants right. had to pay less tax than we do now? Yeah, possibly. We're, we're heavily taxed. But yeah, the cartels in, in Mexico, mate, by and large, um, probably much better than the government. I mean, they tend to, when the government try and get involved, they quite often are found in the harbour minus their heads. So um, the cartels are quite efficient at dealing with government interference. And they run a lottery, which is absolutely scrupulously honest. Yeah. They pay out on the dot to the people. Mate, it's they're not perfect. Scrupulous. Again, again mm. I, I don't want a cartel either, but I'd probably rather be looked after by a cartel than a government. Well... I think Ronald Reagan summed it up. The most terrifying sentence in the English language is, I know what you're going to say. I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Help. Yeah. I think that's a yeah. brilliant one. It's yeah. true. Reagan, again, interesting, very interesting man. What, what, what yes. happened with him? Free assassination attempts. Um, again, not a saint, but very interesting. To, to, to see you know what what went on in that time and, and i kind of liked him actually i kind of like him well now I, I i mean when you look at some of the things he said he came over as stupid but he wasn't that stupid he came out oh, some, no, 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 that was a bit of an act wasn't it i think yeah the, the stupidity thing yeah, um, but, yeah again fascinating mate I, yeah. something i'd like to read up more about david Icke used to say that in his nine hour talks what would happen if we had a war and no one turned up? That's Brilliant. true. It's so true, though, isn't it? It's Oh, you have to see The Mouse That Roared. There's a film with Peter Sellers. It was a very cheap film. It's probably a B film. B movie, as they call them. It was made in 1959. It's on YouTube. And there's a scene in it. I actually saw it on the television when I had a television. And it was one afternoon, you know, when they showed you all the cheap film. And it's, it's, it's a bit corny, you know, because it's a bit aged now. But there's, a, there's a supposed to be this um, kingdom in the middle of Europe. It's the only English-speaking kingdom. And it's a very small land of about sort of two or three miles square. And they're bankrupt. So what the king and queen decide to do is declare war on America and then surrender to get american aid you see so yeah. they have only got they've only got an army of 12 people that have got bows and arrows <laughs> and there's all these people all standing in the square the king of the queen and peter sellers acts several parts in it and it's sort of crusty old <coughs> well i think it's the queen said we have decided to was it in declare war on the United States of America? And all the all the townspeople go, best of blade luck to you, mate. Good luck. All walk off. And but, that is what it needs to be. Yeah. Best of luck, mate. Yeah, get yeah. on with it. Off you go, crack on. You go. Yeah. You go and have your war. <laughs> Find some other politicians to take out. Yeah. yeah the, the, I mean, the, the trouble is, I mean, look, mate, I, all I wanted to do when I was a teenager was join the army. That's all I wanted to do, mate. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I didn't get in was because I had epilepsy. Um, but it's all, and it, and it flattened me when they turned me down, mate. It absolutely flattened me because I'd grown up most of my life thinking that was what I wanted. So I wanted to go into the engineers, mate. So I wanted to go into the Royal Engineers and then probably do that for sort of five, six years. And then my ultimate aim was to get into the regiment, which the, you know, the SAS. Mm. That was, that was, and I was fit, mate. I was a fit young man. I was a fat little thing when I was 15. And I, again, taking responsibility, mate. I, I, I didn't want to be fat. So I started jogging 
and from jogging i started going to the gym i, I had um free weights in my bedroom um and 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 for three or four years mate my whole life just revolved around fitness and 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 cane in it running six and a half miles every night mate and stuff like that um, that is fit i mean yeah, I'm mate. cycling six and a half miles i mean I, i'm getting a bit worried because i used to cycle six miles and wouldn't think anything of it i'd cycle six miles now <gasps> i bet it hurts yeah mate. <laughs> Especially when you uh, when you adjust your seat wrongly and you get a you get a BSA, you know what that BSA is—a bloody sore ass, you know. Yeah, cycle seats <laughs> aren't comfortable, especially not on racing bikes, are they? The oh bloody hell! No one's like a razor blade. Them. It's sort of yeah. But yeah, I got my bike was... seat isn't very nice. You might as well just yeah. take the seat off, mate, and sit on the pole. Well, you know, uh, I mean, it might cure your piles, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably just as comfortable as the seat, though, mate. That's the point. Well. I've got one of these things called a spider and what is like a spider's web and it's supposed to give, but it doesn't. Right. Oh, it, 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 it hurts you up the M1 and the M2, shall we say. Yeah. Oh, 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 and I've adjusted it today. So I hope I'm a bit better, you know, but um, you just get used to it though. Don't you? That's the thing. You know, right? yes. it's like anything, the more you do. I love cycling. It, it, yeah. I, like I say, I've, I'm not a recreational cyclist, but I've used, bikes over the years to get to and from places to and from work quite quite regular there's been a lot of times in my adult life when i've not had a car and um i've been more than happy to bike to work don't bother me the only problem though is this is one of the most dangerous times of the year because of wet leaves wet leaves are more dangerous i think than ice yeah because they give you a full sense of yeah. security yeah and when i came a cropper i came a cropper on leaves I knocked myself out for 10 minutes. <laughs> it's a kid's foul, mate. <laughs> you're, lucky, you're lucky they found you, mate, and didn't do anything bad to you. Well, that was all right. They called ambulance, and I, I actually, I, I, I said, thank you very much, but I don't need ambulance. I walked home, and um, I was all right. And then in the afternoon, the shock hit me. <gasps> yeah, and when the adrenaline drains out of you, mate, I had yeah. an accident on my bike where me and another chap, we came around a corner, we had a head on and we clashed heads. Neither yeah. of us had a helmet on. And, um, I didn't have a helmet on either. No. no, and I just carried on cycling to, actually, it was to my wife's, although she wasn't my wife at the time. We'd not been dating for long. And I carried on round to hers. And when I got to hers, I started feeling a bit dizzy. And she phoned 111 and they sent an ambulance out and everything, mate. And I was like, this is complete overkill. I don't need this. No. Um, but I remember after the ambulance went, it was like then all the adrenaline dumped into my stomach yeah. and I felt queer, mate. You know, I felt ill. Um, yeah, I should probably explain as well that in Norfolk, queer means ill. Yeah, I don't know if that's a thing where you live, but um, well, no, it is it is a thing because there was a there's a thing called uh, there's a monologue by Stanley Holloway called My Word, You Do Look Queer, right? And it's yeah. nothing to do with homosexuality, no, it's no, no, no. in Norfolk, Ill. queer means ill, that's right, yeah. it's, it means that same down here. Yeah. yeah, there's, there's yeah, lots of sayings that, that that have been corrupted, which is a shame, really, because they they were innocent sayings that people. Well, gay didn't... used to mean you were happy, didn't it? Yeah, well, there was a band yeah. called the Gay Boys in 1930s. Yeah. I hate and... the way they change the the meaning. It's like the word stream. Stream used to be such a beautiful thing. Stream, yeah. you think of water, you think of pebbles, yeah. you think of nature. Now. A whole generation are going to grow up, and for them, stream means to watch some to 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 what we're doing now. And the other one I Hate can't it. stand is mean. Now, mean means someone that is stingy. Yeah. But then in America, it means something that's good. Oh, that's mean. Yeah, there's, they do that, don't they? Don't they, like they say words like sick, like the younguns, don't they? Sick mm. means something. Oh, sick, sick man it means it's good apparently. Oh, the other one cool baby yeah that's really but i mean there's, there's lots of americanisms i mean my uh granddad couldn't stand i think you probably got this from the war he just couldn't stand americanism it, it, you know he's different he, he couldn't stand the english language being corrupted well, by i was american gonna say language. i mean they used to say didn't they overpaid over sexed and over here um yes. there was a lot of a lot of american influence came into the uk didn't it in the 40s and was it and they uh, and we uh they used to call the British, what was it, underpaid, undersexed, underpaid, under, under, under Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Yeah. Yeah. 
but the thing is it, it, it is that we have had uh, the other one i can't stand is guy because guy is a corruption of a word uh, that comes from a certain place which means cattle so when you say hi guys you're saying hello cattle guilty mate i, see, I use that all the time but that yeah. goes back to my time in hospitality so yeah. like when i worked in restaurants and i was running shifts you you, you greet yeah. people at the door and you don't know what you know people if you've got a group of people just or a family you just say hi guys yeah how many is it for table for four today is it or whatever but yeah, guys to. was something i used to use a lot but anyway we've come up to where we've gone past that well so Blood over it, Nora. 20 it's minutes well. over so uh i bet if we you're still assume... listening to this i congratulate you because that's God right knows what random random rambles we've been on in the last and, 20 uh, minutes we'd like to think of the people that's going to get psychiatric treatment tomorrow after watching this program absolutely and, uh... <laughs> how many have we still got live eric just out of interest at uh, 28 not bad is 28 it? people are still watching this yeah poor sods still... <laughs> I still you all. I really yes that's do. right let's sit there going oh. I'm, that'll <laughs> blow my mind. Still this, anyway, right? thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks. Always a great yeah, show. Cheers, Chris. Uh, Pleasure, I mate. do hope uh, you don't know yet, but you might be coming on in a couple of weeks' time. Is that all right? No problem, we, mate. Just give us a heads up, and I can make sure I finish it. Certainly round, will. So. And uh, and we've got a good crowd tonight. And remember, you, everyone, um, yeah. just to remind everybody: this 28 miles per hour. It's not 28. What's on that? Uh, this. Uh, uh, 20 miles an hour speed limit they're going to impose around Chesant and Waltham Cross. If you go onto my website, foghamhallradio.com, there's a link to where you can oppose it. So I would advise going on there. On, if you want to laugh, go on to Telegram, Foghamhall, Hall, like that, or you can actually go to onto the Foghamhall Hall site on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Always a great show with Chris and, uh, I mean, Chris the Gardener, rather. I'm not being That's conceited. <laughs> and, no, not at all. And also, um, be back this Thursday with a mystery guest at uh, 8 o'clock. And, as I say, thank you very much for joining us. And whatever happens, have a bloody good laugh and good night. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, everyone.